The following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. College football's kickoff weekend is here. Rutgers, eager to continue the success from last season, is led by early Heisman candidate Brian Leonard. North Carolina, a team with a potent offensive attack, begins their new season with a new quarterback. A new season, a new opportunity. College football is back. the side welcome everybody that is the famous bell tower chiming out and this is kickoff weekend presented by dr pepper two teams looking to build on last season rutgers getting to a bowl game for the first time in 27 years for north carolina a new offensive scheme they will put that on display here today i'm gary thorne with andre ware down on the field todd harris will be joining us welcome everybody we start at north carolina first issue who plays quarterback it's going to be joe daly won a close competition with cam sexton we may see him at some point in this football game but they relied on experience that he had at north at nebraska Nebraska when he transferred in here and he's, it's on his shoulders to lead this North Carolina football team. And when we turn and look the other way to Rutgers, it's about a running duo that's one of the best in the nation. One of the best tandems in my opinion across the country. Ray Rice provides the spark on the outside and then the do it all back in Brian Leonard, their Heisman Trophy candidate. He'll do it all. It can, inside, outside, catch back, passes out of the backfield. He is the man for the Rutgers. And in light of that, both of these defensive lines are going to be asked to play big. When we come back, it's Football, and when we come back, John, Craig, and Doug will join you. And welcome back, everybody. A sea of blue. It is the new blue. That is the motto for the North Carolina Tar Heels this season as they get set to open their year against Rutgers. This is their opening game as well. Jesse Hawley is a name you're going to hear a lot about today. Let's get down to Todd Harris. Well, Gary, being raised by a grandmother who worked as a juvenile detention officer has served Jesse Hawley well. The Carolina wideout is the only receiver on this team with game experience, and he will be called on to lead a potentially dangerous group of receivers both on and off the field. Now, he is a New Jersey native, but he told me coming out of high school, he was received marginally by the Rutgers coaching staff. He said, I wasn't even in their top ten of recruits. So he says today's game is personal to him, and he is out to show Rutgers what they missed out on. On a weather front, despite more than five inches of rain from Tropical Storm Ernesto Thursday and Friday, the field has a sand base, and the ground crew told me this is basically a two-acre golfing green. I know that gets Andre Ware excited anytime I mention golf. That's right. You know what? And those players, they remember that, Gary. When, yeah. when you're recruited and you're shunned a little bit, I can remember experience at Texas A&M going in there. Jackie Sherrill was the head coach. Here is our IBM star watch. Mike Teal gets a turn at quarterback. He's had three starts under his belt. Brian Leonard's the big runner, and so is Rice. Boy, a dynamic duo, but uh, the, the deal will be with Mike Teal, how he plays today and directs this football team will be the success of what Rutgers has this afternoon. Both of these teams are taking a look at quarterbacks today, whom they have a little wondering to do about. North Carolina won the toast to go on defense, so Rutgers is going to get the football first as they are in their white uniforms with the red numbers, red helmets, and guess what color North Carolina's got? Yes, indeed. Carolina blue. Daquan Underwood is back to receive along with Willie Foster. Foster is a great kick returner. Keep an eye on him. He's number 84 back there. They'd like to keep the ball away from him. He's going to get it about a yard back to the 10. Umbridge up to the 13-yard line. First big play goes to the Tar Heels. What a hit by Dirk Ingram. Yeah, it just came flying out of nowhere and basically stopped Willie Foster right in his tracks. He was named the Big East Special Teams Player of the Year last year, and I tell you what, North Carolina coming in fired up. Here is the lineup for Rutgers, and their front four will be asked to do a lot of work today because they are outweighed and out-experienced. Yeah, Clark Harris, everybody's All-American at tight end, two-time first-team All-Big East. 
First and ten on the 13. Leonard is in the backfield. A potential Heisman. He is a candidate. He is the lone setback. Two wide receivers to the left. They're going to come out passing to you with a screen at the 10. He'll get it up to the 15. Not a lot of blocking. Leonard will be taken down at about the 18-yard line. How about that? We talked about this before this game started and said both teams want to run, but look for Rutgers maybe to try and open it up. Why? Because the front four for North Carolina are big and they're experienced. Yeah, they're big and experienced, and that's the playmaker for the defense. Larry Edwards, just he, they'll use him to blitz. They'll use him to get in creases, can cover the tight end out of the off the, uh, off the edge. He's their everything guy for uh, this North Carolina defense. It is going to be a second down and uh, five. Second and five, two receivers. Receivers to the left side. They'll look to Leonard again on the carry up to the 20, 25 first down and a lot more to the 32 yard line. Well, it's the spark plug Ray Rice. They go to him as well. And all, going over that, the ex inexperienced part of that offensive line, the big right side right there, just a nice little delay. And Ray Rice into the open field and watching him on film yesterday, he just jumps off the radar at you. His speed, he's got, he's not a big guy, just 5'9", about 195 pounds, but boy does he hit the hole quick. Rice, an outstanding season last year. He gained 1,120 yards. Ray Rice in that backfield, three receivers left side. Rutgers said they were going to use a lot of receivers, and boy have they started that way, using only one set back. Big rush, and it'll be a sack at the 15-yard line. That is Hiley Taylor, the defensive end, a noted rusher on this defensive team. We're talking with Coach Marvin Sanders, their defensive coordinator, and he's going to come right off the edge and get to Mike Teal. But they talked about, he said, how are they going to block Hiley Taylor? He is our playmaker along with Larry Edwards on the other edge. But I want to know how Rutgers is going to have an answer for Hiley Taylor. He has had one heck of a spring in summer camp. 31 sacks last year. The continued improvement for this team in that department brings up a second down at 16, a loss of six. Rice is going to be the deep set. They'll put a split receiver on that left side. Handoff will come straight ahead, nowhere near the first down. Running Rice out of the backfield, Pascal, Mike Pascal moves in and puts the hit on. And yeah, right now, just look for Rutgers to kind of control the ball on a dangerous area of the football field. Sixth season, there you see the record. However, he's entered a new deal that'll keep him at Rutgers through 2012, if all goes well. A passionate football coach says, I've never worked a day in my life coaching football. Just loves being around the kids, loves operating this program for Rutgers. This is a third down and 12. Teal will work out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Teal gets the rush from the middle, and that'll be incomplete. He was forced to gun that. A good effort. He tried to get over to Dennis Campbell, a wide receiver, but a big rush. And he didn't have time to get it off, and so the North Carolina defense holds. Yeah, Larry Edwards, they, we talked about him using him to blitz. They love bringing him off the edge, and he gets in the face of Mike Teal and stops him. We expected to see a lot of formations. You talked about eight receivers, seven, eight receivers we'll see for this Rutgers football team, but, boy, they will formation you to death, and it was important for North Carolina to stop Rutgers on this first possession. Watch this kid kick. If he does what he did in the pregame, <laughs> they'll be back in the end zone. Joe Radigan is a senior. He's got one of the smoothest, softest kicks that I've ever seen. I mean, he, and he gets off a bad kick. Oh, yeah. That'll be the 40-yard line and bounce back the other way before it is down. He was kicking the ball about 55, 60 yards. Joe, I'm sorry I talked about it. It was my fault. <laughs> Doesn't that always happen, though? Everybody always looks better on the driving uh, range it, than it, when you get on the golf course. I can, uh, well, I'm not even sure with uh, me that's true. Let's take a look at impact players here with Daly playing at quarterback. McGill runs, Holly receives. Well, it, it's all on the hand, in the hands of Joe Daly. Really have to distribute the football, but he will lean heavily on Ronnie McGill to get this offense started early. And punt. Uh, 28 yards, so that gives North Carolina some great field position here on their first and 10. Ronnie McGill will be the tailback. They'll move the two sets to the near side. Joe Daly, the quarterback, gets his first start here for North Carolina. It's been a couple of years. He had to sit out last year after the transfer from Nebraska. And a big push up to about the 49-yard line. Quentin Frierson came in and put the hit on. And a good blocking job straight ahead that time. North Carolina 
their offensive line will be a key here because if they can block and establish a running game, look out. It'll be tough for Rutgers. Brian Kegas, who's petitioned the NCAA for his sixth year, is back at that left tackle spot due to a bunch of injuries. He was rewarded with a sixth year for this North Carolina football team, and you see him go right behind the big fella, the very first play out of the box. And Daly on the handoff, not going to be any room here. Oh, big pileup. Ronnie McGill, you know the linebackers. At least one, if not two, will key on him. And Devron Thompson from Piscataway moved in and put the hit on for the Rutgers defense. The question here is can their front four stand up the offensive line and their linebackers make the tackle? Well, they're going to depend on a lot of guys out of Florida. Coach Yano loves to go down to Florida and recruit guys Eric Foster, Quintero Ferrison, William Beckford, and then Derek Roberson on the outside. All Florida guys. Defense is built on speed. It'll be a third down and nine, passing nine out of the shotgun. Two receivers set both sides this time. And uh, four up in the linebacker position. Big splits in that defensive line for the rush. They will kick over McNair, 35, gets tackled, and a first down. A smart play by a guy who hadn't played a lot of football in about a year and a half. And Joe Daly, good coverage down the field by, the, by Rutgers, and he sees it open up. They blitz, they bring the linebackers, and just creates a big lane for Joe Daly. He's not afraid to pull it down and run the football, protect it, and move the chains. He gets 15 yards and a first down, so there's the first big third down conversion. You see the numbers he had with Nebraska. Yeah, had success in that first play going to McGill along the left side behind Kekos and Gray. Look for North Carolina maybe to run the football left because of the inexperienced on the right side of that offensive line. Ronnie McGill in the backfield, fake to him. Daly's going to keep. He'll go over the 40, and he'll get himself down near the 36-yard line. Jason McCourty on the hit. And you see the versatility of Daly that was talked about it was a lot of people wonder just how much is he going to be asked to carry as well as throw. Well, I tell you what, there's a lot of ways to get a quarterback involved in the game, but you're going to see a play fake here with McGill coming underneath. And then Daly faking the football and then getting him involved with his legs. That's a way to get comfortable. Short screen passes, short quick passes, as well as moving Joe Daly around will get him comfortable early. Second down and sits at the Rutgers 37-yard line. Handoff will go straight ahead and not a lot of room. That's what they're trying to open up is yep. get room for McGill in the backfield, get the linebackers thinking. And that is Courtney Green, who led this team in tackles last year, number 36, making the hit. Boy, it's a recipe, though, when you start bringing line linebackers closer to the line of scrimmage and you're having a little bit of success running the football guess what stick it in there and hit the tight end over the middle yep. that's what may be coming when you start bringing linebackers every play you open yourself up defensively to being hit with short quick three-step passes Joe Daly back out he is from Jersey City but he's playing for North Carolina North Carolina all five plays they have run it is third down and four they're going to pass on this one over the middle that'll be passed and complete almost intercepted after it was tipped up at the 20 yard line the tip made by Frierson that time number 50 the linebacker and that will bring up a fourth down and four yeah big up big defensive lineman Eric Foster got in the face of Joe Daly as well and basically caused him to rush that throw. John Bunning there, sixth season, big year for John Bunning. He feels like they've got some momentum coming into this football season. Willie Foster is going to be back to take the punt. John Bunning's sixth season. You see the numbers that he has put up at North Carolina. The kick will come from the 45-yard line. Hunter Bunning trying to get it into the coffin corner. It is dropped at the five. There it will be downed. And that's where it will be a first down and 10. So not good field position for Rutgers. Both defenses hold early. We'll be back and take a look at Rutgers on the offense. ESPN College Football on ABC. 16th year, the new blue is their motto. The seniors decided that's what they wanted this season to be about. Yeah, it's tough going right now for this Rutgers football team. Starting possession, their first one, their own 13. This one now seven yard line first down for Rutgers as they take over let's see Mike Teal at quarterback whether or not they try and just run this one out of there Ray Rice moving back into the backfield they would like to use a lot of wide receivers but they want to establish it with a running game first in this situation you don't have much choice back to the line of scrimmage the 10 flag is down up to the 13 yard line now we got to see what the penalty is as Rice is there on the carry that's usually in that area of holding and that's indeed what it is. All right, while well, they mark that one off, big time, Times Square. Todd. 
Well, Gary, Brian Leonard, Rutgers' Mr. Dude, all big men on campus, is now larger in life in Times Square. First, it was Oregon hyping quarterback Joey Harrington with a huge billboard. Well, Rutgers has gone video. Rutgers has cranked up their Heisman campaign for the senior fullback who does it all for the Scarlet Knights. Not a bad venue for lunch and your candidacy for Heisman. And can you imagine what a landslide it would have been if Houston would have had Andre Ware in Times Square? I feel cheated. Off the chain. Well, Coach <laughs> Shuttle, he doesn't pull any punches or superlatives. He told me Brian is such a gifted player who's absolutely as complete as they come, end quote. I feel cheated. I didn't have anything in Times Andre, Square. Or... we're going to get a collection from the crew. <laughs> is it ever too late? No, we're going to buy time, <laughs> and we're going to get your face up there. On Times the, Square. Uh, That's big time. Real dangerous territory here. A couple of tight ends in. Handoff will go straight up the middle to the four-yard line, maybe. Boy, there is no room here. Cooter Arnold, the free safety moving in to put the hit on. There's just nowhere to go when you're back inside the five, and Arnold was almost up at the line of scrimmage when he started. I'll tell you, guys that don't believe that uh, Brian Leonard can win the Heisman, guess what? When the season started in 1989, just touching back on, on what Todd was talking about, I was on no one's radar. And all of a sudden, this it jumped out, and at the end, we kind of got some momentum, and it happened. Same thing could happen to Brian Leonard. Second down and 11 at the Rutgers 6. Brian Leonard is standing in the end zone as the long setback. Couple of tight ends and two receivers. Leonard will carry to the 5, the 10, and probably up to the 12-yard line where he is down. He's not close to a first down. Chase Rice will be in and out of that Will linebacker position on defense made the hit. Well, we talked about Brian Leonard being able to do it all right there. You see just the crease right in there, and you watch the cut. Nice feet. The footwork, everything, he just runs the football, shoulder pads always over his feet, and he just jumps out at you on film. I can see why Brian Leonard's going to be one heck of a football player on Sundays in the NFL. Third down and five at the 12-yard line. Third and five. Do they dare go to the air here with wide receivers each way? They've got Leonard and Rice both back. They will go to the air, and they're going to get a first down. A quick hook move, and Sean Tucker, a senior, Hauls it in. It is his 33rd start in a big play. Well, just a nice curl route. You see him driving shoulder pads over his feet and hook it up, and the football's right there as he turns for the ball, makes his for sure catch. But I'll tell you, a lot of people key in on Brian Leonard. He goes to the flat. That opens everything up, that big throwing lane outside to Sean Tucker. There is a third down conversion for Rutgers. They've got the first down and 11 yard gain. Brian Leonard is in the backfield. Again, a couple of tight ends and two receivers split wide. They bring the linebackers up close. Back to pass. A lot of protection completed. 35 40 and driven out of bounds at the 42 yard line. And again, Sean Tucker, this time for 19 yards yeah. on the first down. And Dennis Campbell, the red shirt freshman, opens this up for. Uh, for Sean Tucker. They're going to cross in the middle of the field, which pulls coverage away. You're going to see the cross here, and then all of a sudden, leaking underneath is Sean Tucker, and just pulls it out, clears out this entire area for Sean Tucker. Good job of reading it out by Mike Teal and delivering the football on time. He had 32 receptions last year. Tucker did. Here is Leonard in the backfield again out of the shotgun. As Rutgers finds a little room, big crash put on by the cornerbacks. That opened it up, almost intercepted. Oof. Stepped in on Graves, Jacoby Watkins, who just missed hauling it in. I've never liked trying to throw timing routes out of the shotgun because you can't get, the, get your hands on the football and deliver it fast enough. It almost cost Mike Teal a touchdown, an interception for a touchdown. It is a difficult thing to do catch it and throw a timed out route because basically you got to catch it, mold it, and let it go. You cannot throw the football accurately like that. That was close. Keep in mind a Teal with three starts under his belt takes over as the starting quarterback for Rutgers. Rice is in the backfield. A second down and the 10. The ball at the 42 on the pitch. Rice on the carry. He's got good blocking midfield. One man to beat. He'll get taken down the 40 but into North Carolina territory as Kareem Taylor after an 18 yard gain brings down Ray Rice. Well I'll tell you what Ray Rice we talked about his ability to get to the edge and got a couple of good blocks on the outside nice block down you see the big fella number 77 Pedro Sosa pull around and provide a block and then it's all Ray Rice the speed the power 
And right there, just into the open field and basically a touchdown saving tackle by Kareem Taylor. Four carries, 32 yards for Rice, their leading ground gainer last year, who averaged 5.7 per carry. Rice still in that backfield first and 10. A lot of jumping around and a flag goes down. Well, everybody decided to drop a little laundry late. One flag comes and then all of a sudden you see four more <laughs> end up in the middle of the formation. Uh, we'll see what the call is. It'll only be the second flag that we have had thrown in this game. Our referee, Gerald McGinn. <laughs> Gary, I wouldn't be surprised right here. You get second, first down and five. You accept the penalty. And then the way Rutgers has been going, the running game's going well. Maybe a little play action, maybe some over-the-top action. A bomb. Take a shot, Throw baby. A Take bomb. a shot. Come on. We were talking about this before the game. He will do that with oh, yeah. Rutgers. Uh, he, he will formation you to death to try to get a mismatch, and then once he gets it, he is not afraid to cut Mike Teal loose. He's proved that already in this first quarter. They'll send the man in motion. Brian Leonard Rice is in the backfield with Leonard now, and they fake on the come around to the end. That's up to the 30, and that's going to be another first down. Dennis Campbell, a freshman wide receiver, came around from the far side. And they faked to both their running backs and instead went to the wide receiver. Tonight, don't miss the premiere of Saturday Night Football. Heisman hopeful Brady Quinn will lead the number two Notre Dame team in their quest for a national title against ACC power Georgia Tech. Tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Parker, part of our Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend, ABC. Call me crazy. I like Georgia Tech in that football game. Crazy. But I, I can't disagree with you. That's going to be a heck of a game. Good game. Ten-yard gain on that last one. And they are moving. Rutgers on the pitch to Rice. Rice will get upended after uh, maybe a two- or three-yard gain. He is only a sophomore. Great balance. He's uh, almost ended up going to Syracuse. They just missed getting this kid. And is Rutgers ever happy he made the choice to come there? Yeah, and he brought three teammates from his high school team with him to Rutgers. You talked about him almost committing to Syracuse, and the coaching change basically changed his mind. Came to uh, Rutgers, and Coach Diano couldn't be a happier man with Ray Rice rushing for over 1,100 yards last season. Rutgers offense on the attack here, second down and seven at the North Carolina 22-yard line. Both receivers will end up on the right side. Rice is in the backfield, fake to him, looking to the end zone over the middle. That'll be caught at the 15, and down the sideline inside the 10. Underwood on the reception. They told us earlier this week, you're yeah. going to see a lot of wide receivers. We've had about seven of them in there already. That's a 12-yard game. Yeah, we've seen Sean Tucker in there, Tyquan Underwood. And he was, you know, huge last year on kickoff returns. He and Willie Foster. And they just got to find a way. When you can execute and have success, running back kicks, guess what? You're a playmaker. And we got to figure out a way to get the football in those guys' hands. They're doing it so far in this game. Underwood at 19 receptions last year to the 10 yard line and just a trip up on Rice. He had open field if he could have gone outside, but Larry Edwards, the leading tackler last year for North Carolina, got a shoot top. Uh, Carolina's got to do a better job, get their defense off the field. Right now, Rutgers playing smash mouth, having their way offensively. You see it there, just running downhill at this North Carolina defense. Got to get off the field. They're getting a little bit winded, and that's a concern early in the football game when you have a lot of plays being run at your defense. So Rice comes out that cost him a yard. Second down and 11. Brian Leonard comes back into the backfield. Number 23 out of the shotgun on the handoff. Leonard 10. It's power right. 5, 3 and out of bounds. They sent everybody to the right side to try and lead Leonard in. Yeah, and he's running behind the big tight end, Clark Harris, on that side. But Leonard, I'm surprised we didn't see him elevate. You know, we're in North Carolina basketball state. I want to see him jump, see that vertical. He's not afraid to do it now. He, we saw a couple of highlights where he'll go airborne, give his body up. He is the epitome of football player. Does it all. Does the dirty work. He'll block for Ray Rice on his uh, way to 1,000 yards last season. But also catching the football does what Whatever it takes to help that offense. And for Leonard last year, he led the team with 11 rushing touchdowns. Rutgers threatening here. Timeout's going to be taken on the field. They want to talk it over. Rutgers has asked for the timeout. First timeout we've had. This drive started at the Rutgers seven yard line. It is now inside the 10 of North Carolina. We'll see if they can put it home when we come back.
Tremendous drive by Rutgers. They finished seven and five last year, four and three in the Big East. First bowl game in 27 years. First winning season for Rutgers in 13. Now they will try and punch one in. Left side. Yeah! Touchdown! And they're on the board. And you talk about opening a hole. That was one of those big Mac trucks that could have gone through that one, and Rutgers has the TD. And you talk about the guy doing the dirty work. Brian Leonard is the guy throwing the block for Rutgers. Right here on the outside, going to seal the edge and allow Ray Rice to basically walk into the end zone. Good block, and the receivers blocking down the field. Sean Tucker as well made that play happen for Ray Rice. What a drive, and now Jeremy Ito will be on 40 for 40 in point after his last year, and he'll go for one here to put him up 7 other. Ito the foot into it. It is up. And it is good. So a two-yard run to complete a 93-yard drive that took 12 plays to get there. And Ray Rice out of the backfield takes it home. Rutgers 7, North Carolina nothing. You love to see this. Here are two guys competing with oh, yeah. running backs. They and Leonard blocks, Rice scores, they come back to the bench and they're sitting next to each other. Unselfish, both of those football players. I mean, they, they know that the success rides on one another. And it's a good one-two punch. When you have a guy like Brian Leonard who can lead block and basically came back, could have gone to the NFL, came back and uh, all of a sudden having some success early in this football game. And Ray Rice, I mean, just an outstanding young talent. That was uh, one heck of a drive. And now Rutgers has the 7-0 lead, Brandon Tate. Hakeem Nix will be back for North Carolina. He'll stand back around the five-yard line. Connor Barth, who is their kick, uh, the pitch specialist for this year, uh, Rutgers. Ito and Radigan, that'll be put into the end zone and not going to bring out. And Tate had it, decided to go nowhere. Let's check in on Ohio State, I do believe, Matt Weiner. You believe correctly, Gary. Taco Bell update from Columbus, where the number one team in the country is very quickly sucking the drama out of their season opener. Troy Smith to Ted Ginn Jr. for the first touchdown of the game. Second possession, Smith to Ginn again to make it 14-0. The Buckeyes have had a third touchdown, lead it 21-0. All right, we are back, and we are going to get a flag thrown on that kick. It looks like it's going to be holding on the return team, North Carolina. All right, a good way to get yourself back in this football team. You have to answer points with points. A little pressure now on Joe Daly and his North Carolina offense. I'll tell you what an excellent mix of run and pass, though, for the Rutgers offense. Seven runs, 50 yards, five passes, 42 yards, and that's a balanced offense, and it gives defenses headaches because yep. you can't figure out what they're doing. One of the things they were doing on that last drive, and we'll watch for it, they were making two changes before the snap. Yeah. They were bringing one group, taking them out, another group in, and the keys were not being read by the North Carolina yeah, that's defense because right. they couldn't pick them up. All right, North Carolina's got the football. Joe Daly, he'll have Ronnie McGill in that backfield. They look for McGill to carry often and pick up yardage, and he gets away with the 20, 25. Gary, they had success running the football the very first play of the game by the experienced side of the left side of this big offensive line. Take those and great. They go right back to it. But this is all Ronnie McGill. This is what the coaches love about Ronnie McGill, the senior running back from North Carolina. Was out the first four games of last season with a pectoral injury, lifting weights towards pec muscle, and came back against Miami. But boy. I'll tell you what, what a good job there of running the football and the big offensive line providing a nice little hole. But boy, once he hit it, it was just sheer determination. 48 yards, Barrington Edwards comes back in. He got stopped twice. They had two great chances to make a tackle on McGill and couldn't do it. Now a first down in 10, and I think the time has expired. This brings into play one of the new rules now that college football teams have to get used to. When that ball is marked, the clock will start. 
And it's going to make the game a little faster, and it's going to require both the offense and defense to react a little quicker. I tell you, and offensive coordinators better have a play ready. The offense has got to be, you know, up to speed on how to get in and out of the huddle after big plays, especially big plays like that. As soon as it's spotted, the clock is going to be run. John Daly at quarterback, first down and 10 into Rutgers territory after that 48-yard gain. They want to lob. It'll be a screen to the 35-30, and the Moose. Bobby Rome, who's one of the backup fullbacks, just a freshman, a fullback who was a quarterback, gains 11. And Reichert put the hit on. Todd Harris. Well, Gary, quarterback Joe Daly brought more than just leadership ability at Chapel Hill when he transferred from Nebraska. He began organizing team events where players spent time together. Now, a team favorite is being invited to the Sunday night dinner prepared by none other than the Tar Heels resident Emerald running back Ronnie McGill. McGill has players over on Sunday nights. They all chip in with ingredients, and he creates a dining experience. He says just takes the shape of his own. If they win tonight, linebacker Larry Edwards has already requested steak and lobster tail. Second down and four. Pass is received. 25, one on one inside the 20. It's a shirt tail battle, and Rutgers gets some help. Akeem Nix got taken by Manny Collins out of bounds. Yeah, just uh, touching on that, his specialty, hot sauce and crab legs. And I said, man, I got to get back down here to to, uh, to Carolina and get that specialty from McGill. You know, he, 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 he's the resident chef. They're going to earn it if they get there tonight. They're going to earn it. And I'll tell you what, on this drive, what a good response by this North Carolina football team. The team drives down, they go 93 on you. You can put your head down, but guess what? They didn't. They have responded offensively. Ronnie McGill is back in. Ronnie McGill, 20, trying to turn the corner, 15 to the 10 before he's driven out of bounds. McGill took a couple of plays off back in. Derek Roberson, the cornerback, moved up to drive him out of bounds. So North Carolina now is threatening. After winning back-to-back -back major championships and each of the last four events he started, Tiger Woods trying to continue that run. A special Labor Day weekend showdown. Join ABC in Boston for the Deutsche Bank Championship tomorrow at 5 Eastern, Monday at 3, right here on ABC. I'll tell you how special Tiger is. Went to Ireland for a practice round, then flew back and is going to take part in this golf tournament. Well, that's a lot. A lot. No matter. He can do it. And uh, inside the five, or just down to the five, Miguel rumbling away here. Roberson again, the cornerback, had to come up and put the hit on as they're going with their big running back, looking to the end zone, and it will be spotted just shy of the five-yard line. Have you noticed the success coming behind the left side? That experienced side, 41 combined starts for Caicos and Charleston Gray on that left side, and that's where they're having the success. Rutgers going to have to fix that. They moved John Hamlet, the tight end over there, to help out a little bit, but the big guys on that side, Caicos and Gray, moving bodies. And now we'll see if they can punch this in with a couple of plays. They've got a first down and goal from the five-yard line. Again, McGill again to that left side, five and the four. Rutgers, Rutgers bringing everybody in from that defensive backfield. Frierson, the uh, linebacker, put the hit on first. Yeah, that old coach say, if, until they stop it, keep running it. Yeah. And right now, North Carolina, they're just wearing out that left side. And it's one of those deals where an offensive lineman saying, hey, coach, I can whip my guy. Come to me with the football, and that's what they're doing. I mean, Ronnie McGill left all night long until you have an answer for it. North Carolina's going to force feed it. They're going to let the clock run out here. We have completed the first quarter. Rutgers is going to take the lead, but North Carolina threatening to put one in early in the second quarter. Rutgers drove the ball 93 yards for a touchdown, and they did it with Rice taking it in. This North Carolina crowd hoping their team's going to get it tied up in a hurry. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. North Carolina's got a new offense. They call it downhill running. Yeah, and I'm telling you, right now, Ronnie McGill just straight down here. We talked about it. What's the difference in last year's offense and this one? This is in the running game, one step and go. Get downhill, and they have throughout this drive. They are at the four-yard line. Barrington Edwards is the second set here. North Carolina will put the man in motion, come back the other way, and run the other. They've done that throughout the first quarter, and this is to the near side. Touchdown! What a hide by Joe Daly.
Daly sent everybody to the left, and he came to the right, and Daly showing himself in his first start at quarterback capable of running the football. Yeah, and it was because of the success of running the football to the left side of the formation, which set up the bootleg for Joe Daly out the backside to the right side of the formation. Everybody going there, North Carolina showing that they're going to run the football left over and over and over again. The defensive end comes crashing down. Joe Daly's going to walk into the end zone. And uh, it is going to be tied if he can put this one home. Great run by Daly. Aldridge will come out to do the, or Barth will come out to do the kicking here. It is down, it is up, and it is good. So this one is tied at 7-7. Both offenses putting on tremendous drives. That one a four-yard scoring chance. 80 yards, seven plays. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. scored the touchdown both teams putting up some yardage now as Rutgers has 108 total yards North Carolina 107 McGill had 61 of the 80 yards on that drive for North Carolina and there's the seven plays covered at 239 well we talked about having to respond a team takes the football they go 93 yards on you you got to put some points whether it's three early in the football game or punching it in North Carolina, they step up, go seven plays, 80 yards, and able to punch the football into the end zone. Temperature is going to be uh, well over 80 down on the field as we move along this afternoon. I say that because in a game number one of the season, it may have a telling effect on one side or the other. Well, definitely figure out who's in shape yep. and who's not once it gets really, really warm on the field. Connor Barth kicks off, Underwood, and that's Willie Foster. He can travel up to the 10. And he will be down at the 15 yard line on the return. Willie Foster, one of the really outstanding kickoff return artists in the country. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Or well, right now, you talk about for Rutgers. Right now, it's just the Rice and Leonard. Right now, nine rushes, 57 yards, and a touchdown. And they've done an excellent job of mixing the run and the pass. And then for North Carolina, Daly with a four yard run. He had it was all McGill on that drive for North Carolina. Daly right. capping it off. And Mike Teal's got to be feeling pretty good about himself. Rutgers after that last drive. He's their new quarterback. He has Rice in the backfield. They'll have two receivers, tight end on the right side on the draw. It'll be run by Rice up to the 20-22 yard line. Ray Rice on the carry. And D.J. Walker put the hit on. Boy, right now for Rutgers, it's been, when you talk about the meat of the offense, it's this guy, Brian Leonard, right up the middle and then getting him the football out on the edge. He has speed to turn the corner. When you get tired of meat, how about a little Rice to go with that, Gary? Woo, Ray Rice. Breaking a big long run down the field and here getting on the edge. Boy, a good one-two combination in the backfield for Rutgers. Mike Teal now. Leonard is the man in motion. Jogging along the line of scrimmage. He will be the lead blocker. Rice on the carry, and that'll be taken maybe for a yard gain. Not a lot of room. Linebackers moving in, putting some hits on Chase Rice. Durrell Mapp was going to be the will linebacker for North Carolina. It is a bad right knee that is keeping out at number 44. Chase Rice is getting the start defensively, and those two are going to meet up Rice and Rice a lot today. <laughs> a lot of rice on the field. A lot of rice on the field. <laughs> they'll be smoking by the time this is down the I'll way. tell you what. It's a steamed rice, huh? Yep. John Tucker and two tight ends, Harris and Sam Johnson, are both in there. It is a third down, less than a yard for the first down. Rutgers will move it straight ahead and they will get the first down. Good second effort as he Rice will take it up to the 30 yard line. I'll tell you what, when when you look at Ray Rice, you don't think of you, know, you, you don't think of him as being able to run inside, but at 5'9, 195. He's a tough runner. I went down on the field, just wanted to get up close, and he's built 
very well lower body strength, big legs, so he's got power, runs low to the ground when he's inside, but he has the speed to turn the corner and get on the edge and make a defense just go crazy. There you see the numbers that he has put up so far, 57 yards, averaging over five and a half yards a carry, and he stays in on the first down and 10. They fake to him, looking to the sideline, a little bump and push, but it wouldn't have mattered. That ball was not going to be caught. Let's check in again with Matt Weiner. Matt. Gary, a lot of folks like West Virginia as a dark horse to reach the national title game. And as of right now, Marshall might agree with those people. Sophomore Steve Slayton, 14-yard touchdown run. He already has 77 yards on the ground. It's a 14-0 lead. I'm, I'm one of those that uh, I'm one of those that believe West Virginia is going to get to the national championship game. Yeah, I think the schedule favors them, and they've just got one heck of a football team. Ryan Leonard in there, Teal four for seven, passing 47 yards, second down and 10. And the handoff, Leonard, he's got room 30. Quickly that hole is closed, cuts back the other way, pays a price, but he will take it up to the 36-yard line. Kent Walm Balmer, who had three starts. Last year, played in 11 games, came in and put the hit on Leonard. Here's a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Yeah, just right here, West Virginia, right there, sitting at number five, and they've got a schedule that they could just kind of creep up all Great season race. long. Uh, yeah, their only test is going to come against Louisville on the road, but... Oh, what a good football team, West Virginia. Third down and four, Leonard in the backfield. Mike Teal at quarterback. North Carolina fans wanting their D to stand up over the middle. That's going to be complete, and that will be enough for a first down. It is taken up to the 44. Dennis Campbell, a freshman receiver at 5'9". Chase Rice, the hit after an eight-yard gain. Boy, a good job of just standing in the pocket. And that's my teal. You saw the, the the maturity of a young quarterback. He got in trouble to play before, threw the football out of bounds, comes back there, the fourth receiver to catch a football. So he's distributing the football equally among this Rutgers receiving core. Teal getting it done, looking for the long bomb down the sideline, one-on-one -on -one at the 15-yard line, and that'll be incomplete. Flag is down. There's the bomb we were talking about. Tyquan Underwood, a sophomore, and Jacoby Watkins, the cornerback, in a bump and run. And we talked about this before the game. Rutgers just run, run uh, Brian Leonard, run Ray Rice, and then take some shots on the outside edges, and they're not afraid to go down the field. This is going to be pass interference. On the defense, in the 28, 15-yard penalty, the automatic. And this is just one on one outside Watkins against against Underwood just a nine route just I'm gonna beat you deep you got to cover it ball is thrown inside to where the receiver can make a play on the football under excuse me Watkins doesn't turn around until it's too late and at that point it's already past interference well Underwood only had four receptions in 12 games that he played in last year a total of 47 yards. He's had a lot more chances already. Rice has come into the backfield now. It'll be a first down. Rutgers moving the football again. Carries open at the 30. Rice cutting back the other way and taken down at the 24-yard line. D.J. Walker, the free safety. And Rice had a lot of room in the cut back towards the middle of the field. Well, I'll tell you what, that's secondary for uh, North Carolina having to make a lot of tackles. But you see here just blocking down, tight end Clark Harris, and then pulling around as Pedro Sosa leading the way. And then it's all Ray Rice into the open field, getting on the second level of the defense and then into the third level of the secondary. And all of a sudden, it's safeties, strong safety, free safety, having to make tackles. You cannot live like that if you're North Carolina. 16-yard gain. Leonard is the lone setback to tight ends they go to Leonard Leonard nowhere to go in the corner driven out of bounds at the line of scrimmage so straight running play and again it was DJ Walker and that's what it's going to take a lot of guys you see a lot of blue rallying to the football these guys are too good Rice and Leonard to try to tackle one on one they can make you miss even Leonard as big as he is 6'2 235 pounds can make you miss when he gets into open space so you got to show up rally with a bunch of different defenders to try to get these two guys down this North Carolina secondary is the number of players who are coming from other positions yeah that may be one of the problems in this game you got a strong safety Taylor he was a free safety Cooter Arnold was a tailback who's moved in there 
Uh, you've got uh, Watkins, who has suffered from a broken leg, getting playing time in there. You've got Tinsley, who was a fullback, who's moved into a will linebacker. I mean, you've got a lot of guys who are learning positions in this game for North Carolina. It is tied at 7-7. Rutgers with one timeout left. North Carolina's got three. Andre Ware, Todd Harris, I'm Gary Thorne. We welcome you. The beautiful Bell Tower here on the campus of the Tar Heels of North Carolina. And it is a just a gorgeous campus. And after that big storm went through here, Ernesto, a lot of rain, but you couldn't have asked for a nicer day today. What a difference a day makes. Brian Leonard in the backfield. This game is tied 7-7 here in the second quarter. They look for the quick pass. Drops one over the middle incomplete. He took a Mike Teal took a couple more steps than he wanted that time. And by the time he got set, there was nothing to throw to. Yeah, there's nothing there, but I'll tell you what. You talk about protecting your quarterback, Brian Leonard, just stepping up in pass protection. They're going to get a blitz right here, right in the face of Brian. Watch that, just right there. Matched up, going to stone the linebacker coming in and stop him in his track, allowing just for a second for Mike Teal to get up. You talk about a guy that just does the dirty work, and it goes unnoticed. Brian Leonard's one heck of a football player. Doesn't go unnoticed by the scouts, Andre. Not at all. Four NFL teams are here today. Third down and ten, looking for the screen pass. Right side, Leonard cuts back 20. Still going to get more and not enough for the first down. Up to the... Yeah, maybe the 15-yard line, 16-yard line. D.J. Walker moved in to put the hit. So a third and 10, and they're not going to get enough for the first down. They'll be shy of it by about a yard. Would not surprise me. You got two outstanding backs, both excellent in short yardage situations for Cochiano to go for this. You got Leonard, who's just hard-nosed, and you got Ray Rice, who can just get his body low or basically go to the air, go up and over. But they're going to take the points here, try to take the points and go up in this football game. Darrell Stapleton, the veteran center. Harris, Clark Harris will hold. On a fourth and one, 33-yard field goal. Ito, it's down. It is up. The flag is down as well. The kick is no good, but let's see what the flag is. Well, it looked like they waited an awfully long time and had to rush the snap, and everybody for Rutgers just looked out of sync. Ito finished up last year field goal-wise, making his last 10. He had 10 out of 27 with his longest of 52 last year. I don't think he's going to get another shot at it here. You see, he already is walking off. Yeah. And Andre may well be right that they just did not get that snap off in time. Uh, you know, you talk about the ball being set and put in play and the clock starting, and then everybody, they ran the field goal unit on relatively late. All sides. On the defense. Oh, boy. Number 37. Left the field of play. Swing into the zone. He was the 11th player. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. And that one hurts Gary because wow. he was just trying to get off the field, but he crossed over the line of scrimmage, which puts him in the neutral zone. A free first down for for Rutgers, and they're still going to operate offensively. Wow. John Budding obviously not happy. He turned around to whoever was responsible for making the change. Yeah, bailed out Ito. Ooh, <laughs> man. Bailed him out. So Ito doesn't have to worry about the missed field goal, and Rutgers has got it back at the 10-yard line. It is a first down and 10. Brian Leonard in the backfield, 7-7 ball game. Mike Teal, two receivers to the right side. And that'll be carried straight up the middle and down to about, uh, by Leonard, about a three-yard gain, spotted at about the seven or eight-yard line. I will we'll show you just the, the penalty, trying to get off the field. Rutgers running guys off late, and then right there, you cross the line of scrimmage trying to get off. Guys coming on and off. They're in the neutral zone because the clock is running. That's an offsides penalty, and it, it awarded Rutgers a first down and continue to move. Yeah, continue this offensive drive. They had two guys in that zone. Yeah. It is a second down and eight. They can pick up a first down. They can pick up a first down. Big movement there. A rush blocked. And no flags. That is going to be carried to the 30 and down to the 38-yard line. Kareem Taylor, a fumble. It is called a fumble. And it was Larry Edwards, the guy we talked about at the top. Making the play on the quarterback. I got a chance to sit in a meeting with him. He was ready to play yesterday. I mean, he had me wanting to suit up and butt my chin strap. Just listening to him talk, but you'll see Teal here. Play action and right there. They may look at this one they upstairs. Will. I mean, take a close look at this and review it because it looked like the arm was coming forward. Right there, you see 
Larry Edwards get it to Mike Teal, but it looks like the arm was coming forward on the pass play. So we'll take a close look at that one. Rutgers may, may you, still be operating here offensively once we get uh, get everything sorted out. Return 19 yards once a play is run. Anything regarding a review is uh, by the books. And so North Carolina, they're holding it up here. The Remember, every play is reviewed. Yeah. The review official can call down and stop play if he wants to. Edwards is in there. All that's gone on this play. They come out to the flanker screen near side. It'll be taken up the midfield. Just dragging them along. Hakeem Nix, a freshman wide receiver, Jason. McCourty got the ride after a 13-yard game. Boy, they really like Hakeem Nix just right here. Little pop pass outside. He's got great strength, 6'1", 210 pounds, good size and strength, and they, I mean, just right there, excellent hands. They talk about his ability to catch the football, catches everything with his hands, which is hard to teach two receivers in this day and age. Good start for Nix out of Independence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Barrington Edwards will stay in the backfield on the first down and a 10. You see that clock running under six on the play clock. Edwards on the carry, 40. Edwards bursting ahead. Will be downed at the 33-yard line. McCourty has had a couple of tough tackles to make on the last two plays. That one's good for 15 yards. Well, you really have to admire this North Carolina football team. We talked about the long drive, the 93-yard drive, and then responding with points, but then the ability to take advantage of a turnover. And right now, they are moving offensively. They're keeping things simple for Joe Daly, moving him around in the pocket, and the running backs, McGill and Edwards, having a field day behind that big offensive line. Rutgers scored on a 93-yard drive. Rice took it in. Daly a four-yard run after an 80-yard drive. Edwards in the backfield again on the carry. Not this time. And the key was on. Linebackers will down him. Good gang tackling by Rutgers with Ferris and leading it. Don't miss the premiere of Saturday Night Football. Heisman hopeful. Brady Quinn leads the number two Notre Dame uh, Irish in their quest for the national title. ACC powered Georgia Tech tonight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Part of our Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend on ABC. I like how writer, ESPN writer Ivan Mazel described it. He says, if it's a 100-meter dash for the, for the Heisman, Guys like Brady Quinn, Adrian Peterson, they start on the 20-yard line. Everybody else got to start on the goal line. So a lot of guys can catch up. It's, it's way too early. Out of the shotgun, good defensive play as that's knocked down, and there will be no flag. McCarty says, I've had enough of this. I've been involved in three straight plays. Nick's. He was on him twice, and that time McCourty wins the battle. Good deflection. Well, what happens is you're having a lot of success by this offensive line for North Carolina and them running the football. Now, all of a sudden, you got to creep another guy into the box, and that creates man-to-man -man outside. It's going to add the defensive coordinator, Chris Demar Damaris. He's going to ask those defensive backs to basically lock up man-to-man -man on these receivers, and they have got to produce and knock passes down like you saw on that, on that play. Three for six on third down conversions for Rutgers so far in the ball game. One for two for North Carolina. They've got a third and five coming up, and they are going to use a timeout. Obviously, a big play coming up here. Delighted to have you with us. 7 7. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. You saw a big turnover in this game on the attempted pass that was ruled that the ball was live and in play, in effect, ruled a fumble. I want to make clear that is reviewable. Yep, absolutely, and I, in my opinion, I thought Mike Teal was throwing the football, not just because of a former quarterback, but yep. in favor of, but he was made, the arm was coming forward, it was clear, and I thought it was going to be ruled a pass or an incomplete pass, but boy, what a big turnover in North Carolina taking advantage of the turnover. All right, let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question uh, for this Saturday. What teams played in the first ever college football game? And if you can't get one of them, you're not paying attention. North Carolina has got the football. 621 left to go in this first half. Big play right here. Third down and nine. Daly will work out of the shotgun. Slotted each way. Goes over the middle and it's going to be intercepted at the 20-yard line. Back up to the 30, 35, and 40. Manny Collins, the sophomore senior cornerback. 
I'll tell you what, and Daly's prone to throwing interceptions, ninth, excuse me, 21 when he was at Nebraska. And I'll tell you right there, just eyeing the receiver down, and you can't do it. As you in zone coverage, you're going to look at the receiver trying to just eye him down and throws right into coverage, gets fooled by Manny Collins, and all of a sudden Rutgers dodging a big bullet there. So the two turnovers match up for the moment. As the ball, North Carolina got it on the ball that was ruled a yeah. fumble and not a pass, and now they take it deep and on a big third down, Manny Collins out of Plainfield, New Jersey gets it. Rice is in the backfield. Rutgers with Mike Teal back at quarterback. First down and 10. Big turnover. They want to go for the downs over the middle out of the backfield. It'll be taken uh, to about the 44-yard line. Ray Rice just came right through the middle and became a receiver out of the backfield position. All right, look at the time of possession. Rutgers 15 minutes, almost double the time with the football. But I'll tell you, North Carolina, when they had to, they answered the points, and that's why we have an even football game on the scoreboard. Ray Rice had eight receptions last year for Rutgers. It is a second down and a three. They send the wide receiver Campbell in motion. Rice again out of the backfield. He's got a couple of linebackers hanging on as he comes up to that 46-yard line. Kent Juan Balmer. Three-time starter working out of a defensive tackle position got there first. Marvin Sanders, defensive coordinator for North Carolina, basically trying to creep eight guys into the box to stop the run. They know that they had some success running the football, big gashing, gaping holes in that North Carolina defense. He's creeping guys up closer to the line of scrimmage, which means there's going to be some man-to-man -man on the outside. Short yardage situation. Look for Rutgers to go over the top. Harrison Johnson, two tight ends. On the third down and one, they're going to swing it out to the right side, and that's going to be stopped shy of the first down. Brian Leonard. Leonard gets tackled by Jacoby Watkins on a big, big play. I'm sure Coach uh, Shiano's going to ask for a measurement here because it's going to be very, very close. But you see the linebackers blitzing from the inside and swinging it out to Brian Leonard. Get him out in space, and he knows exactly. You see him lunge there where the first down marker is located. All depends on the spotting here as to whether or not this is a first down. I think he got it. I do too. It is. It is a first down, but Watkins did all he could. A great play over there to shut down Leonard in a one-on-one, -on -one, which no defensive backfield player wants to end up in that kind of a one-on-one -on -one setting. You got it done. That's a tough, tough deal. Leonard now, Gary, has caught a pass. How about the fullback? He has caught a pass in 35 straight games in which he's appeared in. That's a lot of football and a lot of production from that young man, Brian Leonard. That's why he's called the complete player. Ray Rice is back in there. They will have two wide receivers on the right side. First down and 10. 4-10 to go here in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Rice straight up the middle. Look at the speed. 41 to beat. Not quite. He gets tackled after the first down at the 32-yard line. Again, it is D.J. Walker. Walker has already made about three touchdown-saving tackles. Well, every time they try to go seven-man front, you're going to get the creases right there, and it allows Ray Rice to make a move on the second level of the defense. All of a sudden, Kareem Taylor, all those guys back playing in the secondary, they're having to make the tackles, and it, you are living dangerously when the defensive backs are making tackles on a running back and a running game. That's 21 yards. He's closing in on 100 yards here in the first half. 13 carries and 96 yards gained for Rice. And there he goes again. 25 and down to the 20, maybe the 21 yard line. And they just cannot stop him. Wow, Larry Edwards makes the tackle. Todd Harris. Well, Gary, as Ray Rice continues to run wild here in North Carolina, Coach Shiano has found fertile recruiting ground at one of the high schools across the river in New York. New Rochelle High School has given Coach Shiano three of his best athletes. The sophomore tree includes Ray Rice and safeties Courtney Green and Glenn Lee. So between New Rochelle High School, the state of Florida, and the homegrowners at New Jersey, doesn't do too bad recruiting. That's 107 yards, Todd. Rice is picked up. Wherever you're from, that's a big number. Yes. <laughs> and great balance up to the 20-yard line as a Leonard and Rice both in the backfield. Rice again on the carry, and again, D.J. Walker moved in on the hit. Well, Todd hit on it a little bit about the recruiting philosophy 
um, of Coach Greg Schiano, and he, he, it's called the State of Rutgers. And there you have it, 62. He wanted to recruit the state of New Jersey, just recruit up north, the state of New Jersey, but then go down south to Florida and find himself some speed. 39 recruits out of the state of Florida, which adds the speed. But I'll tell you, Ray Rice from New Jersey got a little speed of his own. He is, he is much quicker than I think the defense thought he was going to be. A second down and nine. Rice on the carry, down to the 10 and down to the seven yard line. Great blocking out in front. Kareem Taylor came in and put the hit on. This Rutgers offensive line knew yes. they faced a challenge today against a front four North Carolina known as the bruising front four. What? Right now they're winning. It. They're the centers. Darryl, Darnell Stapleton, all those big guys up front. He's the ring leader. He gets everybody set and where to go along that offensive front, number 53, and has done a magnificent job. They like to pull him and get him out in front as well, block down, pull him around when they're going outside. Heck of a job up front by these big guys from Rutgers. Rice has carried the ball four straight times for 13 yards. They look again up the middle. Touchdown, Rutgers in. And Rice puts on a drive of his own as Rutgers retakes the lead 13 to 7. Well, just the philosophy. I'm just going to line up, smash in the mouth, come downhill. And Brian Leonard throwing blocks. You got Cameron Stevenson, the guard, right guard, pulling around and making blocks. And Ray Rice basically walking into the end zone. It was all Ray Rice on that drive. Wow. So the point after, Ito comes out to put it up. Rice. Last five carries on that drive for Rutgers to retake the lead. An impressive ground game for Rutgers. Ito's kick is up, and uh, it is good. He doesn't miss those as he hits 42 out of his last 42. Rutgers goes on top, 14-7. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Welcome to Rutgers University, founded in 1766, 10 years before the American Revolution. Ooh, here we go, I know, shortcut. Oh, and that's lovely. Hold on, this could get a little bumpy. Rutgers research is revolutionizing transportation. Thanks, Carol. Helping create new jobs and businesses. Protecting New Jersey's famous shoreline. And pioneering new ways to fight disease. Hi, Professor. And the research our professors do shapes the lessons they teach in the classroom. That's what makes Rutgers such a great university. You've been a great group. Bye-bye. You got to suck in a little oxygen over there after the job Ray Rice is doing, scoring the touchdown, eight plays, 63-yard drive. He carried on the last five. He ran six times total for 55 yards, caught a pass for seven. And the do all back, I'm telling you. And he's being asked to do more. Yeah. <laughs> Our half like trivia question, what teams played in the first ever college football game? Answer is? Rutgers and Princeton, 1869, long time ago. Playing football back in 1869. How about that? We didn't have that game on. We would have, but we couldn't get the rights to it. <laughs> That's right. I'm yeah. sure we would have tried. <laughs> 137th year of football now for Rutgers. And in those years, they've only faced North Carolina twice. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, it's isn't it? a good game for ESPN Classic. How about that? Uh, well, yeah, we're <laughs> trying to get the classic. film. We're trying to get... <laughs> Yeah, it's on a big, big it, reel. And it would be film. A big reel. It would be real. It's actually uh, still shots that you just keep putting together. 16 millimeter. Yeah, that's right. It's like <laughs> it's another Civil War production. <laughs> For the targets. All right. Nix and Tate. Brandon Tate will be the closest to you on your television screen when we show the uh, receivers. Jeremy Ito, who is the kicker for Rutgers, will be putting it up. Rutgers with the lead. And Ito will try and keep that one to the near side, way into the end zone. Going to bring it out. Tate by crowds ooing and awing to the 10. They're not ooing and on anymore. 25, 30, up to the 35-yard line. You can't get a gain if you don't take a risk. He took a risk. Glenn Lee makes the tackle. Hey, what dangerous bringing it back. But this last drive by Rutgers was all Ray Rice. He's showing you inside. They went basically went right at the heart of that North Carolina defense. Right up the middle. They tried the edges right there. A little stretch play. And Ray Rice breaking tackles. And right here, getting himself into the end zone. Low pad level. All oh, Ray Rice on Boy. that drive, Gary. He is incredible. The offensive unit just coming on now, and again, you got to keep an eye on that clock. A minute 45 left to go, and you see the game clock running along with the play clock at 19 seconds. Yeah, you mentioned a little, little hot down low. 
And Ray Rice really feeling the effects of this heat down in uh, down here in North Carolina. North Carolina's got the football first down and a 10. Barrington was in the backfield. And a find a way to go. No. Swarmed under for a loss. There was no room for Edwards as DeBron Thompson, number 55, the linebacker out of Piscataway, moved in. No room because the offense is designed to one step and get it downhill. You can't jitterbug. You can't move around. Try to juke in the backfield. If, if you do, it's going to allow holes in the defense to come. Guys come running through, and that's exactly what happened there. Barrington Edwards got to get one step, get downhill, and get into the offensive line. And they will use the timeout North Carolina will. Each team has one remaining in the half. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, both big guys there. Tal's trying to cool themselves off and Joe Daly trying to uh, answer the points in this drive. He did an excellent drive, that job once uh, Rutgers scored on the first drive. They got to answer points with points to stay in the football game. Hey, Todd, is it hot down there? Yeah, exactly, Gary. You know, earlier in the day we had a nice breeze that's blowing, and it looks like the wind is not making it down here to the field level. So I think the point that you and Andre pointed out earlier about we're going to find out who's in shape, I think at halftime a lot of the coaches are going to see some players gassing. And, and that means depth's going to matter. Exactly. Huh? You hit the nail on the head, partner. It's going to be who has the better depth on each side of the field. And I'll tell you, Rutgers young behind the starters. North Carolina got a little bit more depth in those big guys up front. All right, North Carolina's got the football after they use the timeout daily. This will be from the 30-yard line. Back into the pocket. Big rush gets hit. Is this ball alive? No. An immediate call that it was a forward pass. It'll be an incomplete pass. Foster moving in. Eric Foster, the junior on the tip. Now you tell me the difference between the fumble of Mike Teal and this one. Right here, Daly, back in the pocket. Ball's down a little bit, and right here, just coming up, and the ball comes out, gets a big paw on Eric Foster, but it looked exactly like the turnover and the one that was ruled a fumble by Mike Teal. I don't know the difference. Eric Foster's a great story. He Close. had a knee injury in game two and missed the, the remainder of last season. He had to really work his way back yeah. and has rehabbed and has done a great job. A third down and 13, four wide receivers, North Carolina. Edwards will carry out of the fullback position, turns the corner 40, gets the first down, and will be taken out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Flag down, Derek Roberson over on the hit. Boy, sometimes you can get a defense so spread out that you have those big gaping holes, and if you can get north and south, you have a chance to pick up long yardage on a draw play, but this may come back with holding. Holding. Holding on the offense. Number nine. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. That hurts. That hurts big time. Yeah, that's right here. You're going to, right there, it's Jesse Holly just gets enough of the jersey. Trying to block downfield. Maybe it wouldn't even have mattered if he doesn't block him or hold him long enough. But just gets enough of the jersey to draw the officials' attention. How about Jesse Hawley that uh, we have not heard? One, that's the first time we mentioned his name. Yeah, and he is the leader of the receivers. And they're not really throwing the football a whole lot. Basically still trying to ease Joe Daly into this football game. Not really letting him cut loose in the passing game. They've got the four receivers again set here. Third down and 12 this time. Again, they're going to run Edwards again to the 40. Let me do it again, he says. Looks like he's got enough. Ronnie McGill, rather, looks like he's got enough for the first down. McGill out of the backfield. Same play, different carrier. And big yardage, and it is good enough for first down. They needed 12, got 13. And I tell you, Todd talked about the heat taking being a factor in this football game. I think right now Rutgers tired defensively and really starting to feel the effects of the heat down on the field because two big-time runs for first downs by North Carolina, picking up 13 on one. North Carolina doesn't seem to be in any hurry here with this game clock closing in on 30 seconds. Taking a long time to get this off. Daly out of the shotgun, steps up, throws it to the near side, incomplete. That will stop the clock intended for Nix, who has been his favorite receiver here in the first half. Fans are booing a little bit because it took so long to get that, that offense started again with a game clock under a minute. Yeah, just a lot of pressure on the outside on Daly. Garrett Reynolds, the right tackle, working against William Beckford. 
out of that secondary and I'll tell you boy he he rushed daily and wouldn't allow him to get comfortable in the pocket forced him out and just basically put a little bit too much mustard on the football. Daly has missed his last four attempts in the passing department. He'll stay in the shotgun, rushes on to the corners. It's running a screen and well read. Yeah, and, and a good decision by Joe Daly. And they're going to call grounding, but he had McGill in the area, and they were trying to set up the screen. And if it's clogged up in there as a quarterback, you throw it at his heels, come back on third down. And I don't understand this, this call by the official. It may be changed because this discussion, I think, is about whether or not it was an appropriate flag. That's a great read by the defense of Rutgers. Nobody, they, they saw it coming and the linebackers pulled No back. flag on the play for intentional grounding. Good call. Yeah, and it's a good pickup of the flag. You see McGill here just going to work inside, and you see him right there trying to run the screen. Everybody around the football, smart play on the part of Joe Daly. Just throw it away. It's a bad play against a good defense. Throw it away, come back on third down. Now see the, the clock's running. The ball was marked for play, and the clock starts running, and here you're seven or eight seconds into it with 19 left to go here in the first half. Third down and 10. Daly again working out of that shotgun. Four receivers, two each way. Deep drop by the safety. Over the middle, it'll be completed at the 37-yard line to Brooks Foster, the sophomore wide receiver. Well, we talk about the inexperienced at wide receiver for North Carolina. First, it was uh, Hakeem Nix catching his first ball in his game. Now Brooks Foster comes up with his first reception. You got to hustle it here. They do, and now a timeout will be taken by Rutgers. So Rutgers is going to use their last timeout to get their defense set. As North Carolina is trying to push one in with only 12 seconds to go here in the first half. A reminder that next week, Saturday Night Football features the rematch that we've been waiting for. Jim Trussell leads the top-ranked Buckeyes to Austin. They will tangle with Mac Brown's Longhorns last year's winner. Rode that momentum all the way to the national title. See what happens this time around next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Let me tell you something. Next week, wherever I am, I will have some a nice meal and set and ready with my TV watching that one closely. Now, you, you wouldn't have a bottle closely. of nice red wine to go with it? <laughs> maybe. Would you do maybe. that? Maybe. <laughs> right, so, yeah. Just maybe. There you uh, take a look. The most consecutive seasons with a 1,000-yard rusher. Well, I'll tell you, Texas right there with 11. North Carolina with 12 consecutive seasons with a 1,000-yard rusher. And I'll tell you right now, Ronnie McGill may make it 13 because he has the uh, ability to really, really get uh, get this offense started. And we saw it at parts in the first quarter of this football game. They're going to really have to rely on him throughout the course of this game. I'm not really convinced yet that you're ready to turn this football game over to Joe Daly offensively. Allow those playmakers around him to continue to hold him up just a little bit. All right, we'll see if North Carolina can uh, move it here. They have scored. Rutgers has Daly's uh, the four yard run Rice a seven yard run after drives of 80 and 63 yards North Carolina got one after a 93 yard drive they're looking deep Daly looking in the middle it is caught at the 30 not enough for first down got to get a timeout in a hurry they're going to get another play and they do they get Jesse Hawley the first reception that he has had in the game Ron Geralt the junior strong safety brought him down. This is going to be a long field goal for Carner Barr. This long on the season, I mean, on his career, I think it's like 45 yards. He's had one blocked. Excuse me, David Wooldridge. And a timeout will be taken by North Carolina. So each team using up their timeouts here in the first half. And uh, with three seconds left to go, and Rutgers leading it, we'll see whether or not Connor Barth is going to yeah. get the opportunity on the field goal. You're right, his longest is 45. He was 11 for 21 in field goals last year. 524 percentage. He's a junior. You're yeah, right about 47 yards, so this will be a career long for Connor Barth. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, it would do wonders for momentum and for, uh, for North Carolina if they're able to convert here, go into halftime with uh, points on the board. 
Let's talk about while we have a moment, Andre. This is the North Carolina new offensive scheme called downhill running. They want to hit vertical seams. They yep. want their line to blow off the ball. What do you think? A lot of multiple formations, a lot of movement. Well, you know, they'll run shallow crosses. We saw it when Daly hitting guys in the middle of the field, coming from the slot, sitting down in zone coverage. So it's, it's Fresno State now East Coast. That's what it is. 47-yard field goal attempt. Connor Barth for North Carolina. There's virtually no wind affecting this either way. Low kick, it is up, and it is good! A new record for Connor Barth. He goes from 45 to 47 for his longest field goal, and it comes as the clock ticks down here in the first half to zero. Oh, we got a football game. Stay tuned for the second half of this one. All right, let's get out of Todd Harris. All right, thank you, Gary. Coach, 30 minutes complete in the 2006 season. What did you see in that first half that you liked? Well, I think the offense is doing a very good job of controlling the football, mixing it up. They need to continue to do that. Defensively, we have to tackle better. I mean, there's just been some spots where we haven't tackled, and uh, we got to do a better job. But, hey, it's a long game. It's a hot day, so a lot of football left. You absolutely dominated the time of possession, almost 20 minutes. How do you convert that into more points in the second half? Well, you know, I think they scored the, with the footballs other than the one turnover. We've got to get it back quicker. Thanks, Coach. Thank Gary? All right. We've got a lot of football being played on this first full Saturday of college football. When we come back, John and company will update it. And we'll be back for a second half. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. This is ESPN on ABC and Rutgers right now with the halftime lead over North Carolina, 14 to 10. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Doug, I, I mean, you've only been in the business for a couple <laughs> weeks now, and you already said earlier today you liked Rutgers. They look strong. They're running the football. Rice is carrying the load. They're a physical football team. They look look good. I mean, they got a real shot against North Carolina. You know what? And that's what it, that's what's impressed me is the fact that Rutgers looks the part. You know mm -hmm. what? Here they are playing North Carolina, and in the past, you really never thought of Rutgers as that type of physical team, athletic team. But they've turned the corner. I really believe that, that Rutgers has the athleticism and the capability uh, to go in, and they're showing it today against North Carolina. That would be a huge win for the Big East, right? Because everybody thinks the Big East is down against the ACC, yes. who uh, Ooh, yes. some ACC. people think is the best conference <laughs> in the Ooh, country. Bro, 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 Ohio State, the people. number one team in the nation facing Northern <laughs> Illinois. Would they have a tough day? Well, not with Troy Smith and Ted Ginn Jr. Sure well noted. <laughs> making sure every marks it down. Does Rutgers have a chance to win? the Big East. We said West Virginia running the table. No. <laughs> <laughs> Rutgers is not going to win like, the Big East. I like them today. Yeah. I like them today. I don't know about down the road. Well, if they win seven games, this will be a happy, happy, happy community. The State University of New Jersey, Rutgers. Stick around. Coming up, we'll have more scores and highlights. We'll get you back out to the Big Ten. For the Michigan and Wolverines were in action today. And you're watching Dr. Pepper's CFB kickoff weekend right here on ABC. And great to have you with us, everybody, as we come back to North Carolina. It has been a tremendous first half as Rutgers has the 14 to 10 lead as we get set for the second half. Long drives, sustained drives by both teams. Then the field goal at the end of it, North Carolina. Andre, what are we looking at in the second half? Well, I think if you're North Carolina, you got to get your quarterback going because they're becoming predictable. Trying to run the football, McGill, we saw a lot of him in the first half, then turning it over to Barrington Edwards. But they've got to get Joe Daly in sync and going offensively. Wonder if he can really come back from the big interception he had. Led him to a field goal. Uh, at the end of the first half. But on the other side of the football, if you're uh, Rutgers, you got to worry about run defense because North Carolina running the football effectively, stop the run if you're Rutgers because they're running it well themselves. Got to be able to stop it. Joe Daly out there making his start for North Carolina, of course, and on the other side for Rutgers, Mike Teal, two new quarterbacks for each of these teams. Daly finally getting a shot. You can amaze, uh, imagine how tough it was for him after being a starting quarterback at Nebraska and then throwing a bunch of interceptions, having a new coach show up, and you suddenly don't have a job. He ended up fourth 
on the quarterback depth chart and decided it is time to move on. So here he is after sitting out a year getting a chance to make the start for North Carolina. Yeah, he's become a better decision maker through the spring and the summer and he's gotten himself adapted to this style of offense. But you got to get a little bit more production out of Joe Daly if you're Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina. North Carolina will receive Tate at the one yard line. Brandon Tate to the 15, the 20. Tate. Tate gets it all the way up to the 30 yard line. That's the best return we've had for either team in this football game as Devin McCourty came on to put the hit on. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, you look at it right there. Rutgers leads this football game 14 10, but the story has been Rice on the ground. 17 rushes, 128 yards, and two touchdowns to go with it. Mike Teal has eased himself into this football game, just managing the game for Rutgers. McGill, eight rushes, 77 yards. Got to get him back on track and running the football if you're North Carolina. Ray Rice has his six 100 yard plus game. He is longest as 217. Ronnie McGill is back in the backfield. We did not see a lot of him in the first half after the first couple of series. There's McGill with the football. He cuts back 35 and up to the 37 yard line. And so McGill starts it out for North Carolina. Eric Foster moved in on the hit. Let's get downstairs, Todd Harris. All right, Gary, this is exactly why Andre Ware gets the big money. Exactly what Coach John Bunning told me. He said, we've got to get the running game under control. Rutgers is running all over us. He says, we've got to put more people in the box. Stop that running game. I asked him if we'd see Cameron Sexton, the highly touted redshirt freshman at quarterback, and he said, I'd like to see that. Why don't we get that done? So he said, I will not give you any guarantees, but he'd like to get Cam Sexton in the game if for no other reason than to shake the offense up. What, big, what big bucks is he talking about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> put it, I'm rubbing put pennies together, up together. Here. <laughs> That was Ronnie McGill on the carry yet one more time. And it'll bring up an early third down. The third down conversions, five out of seven for Rutgers in the first half, three out of five for North Carolina. North Carolina's got the football here. They get the first down and 10. And it will be at the 39-yard line. So North Carolina trying to get a drive going again. Both these teams have shown the ability to do that. McGill's in motion. Pass out into the flats. McGill puts the block on, but not enough. It'll be at the line of scrimmage where Hakeem Nix, who's been a favorite target, is driven out of bounds. Right, big target on the outside, but good job of rallying to the football by Derek Roberson, the corner outside. You've got the outside leverage, so you want to force everything back inside. You can't allow the receiver to get outside and around you. There's no help out there. But if you can keep it inside, all of a sudden those red helmets, white jerseys start showing up and helping you out. Roberson coming in much stronger this year and a vital factor in that defensive backfield. That brings up a second down and nine. Daly under center for this one. Wide receivers each way slotted to the right side. They work out of that two set position. Long count may have changed it up. We'll go to the fullback. Big rush on nowhere to go for, Barry, for uh, McGill again. So McGill, three consecutive running plays that he's carried on to start the second half. Boy, we talked about being able to stop the run. Well, the answer for Coach Greg Schiano put eight guys in the box, and, and all of a sudden right there, you see it. All these guys around the line of scrimmage for Rutgers, right there. Eight guys in the box clogging up every running lane, and there's really nowhere to go for Ronnie McGill. That is a loss of two last year for Rutgers. Their defense, they had the 36th best defense out of 117 Division I schools. 36 on running, 79th on the passing defense. Out of the shotgun here, there was a loss of two, so third and 11. Daly back, looking left side, and that will be caught. And up for a first down at the 49-yard line by Brooks Foster. Sometimes, Gary, you just have to make a play. You get stuck in third down. You as a quarterback of your football team, you got to make a play right here. Brooks Foster, we've called his name a couple of times, pushing to the depth of the first down marker. Nice, smart heads-up play by a receiver. And Joe Daly delivering the football on time because if you're a little bit late or it's thrown a little bit behind, guess what? It's going the other way. He was 5 for 11 with an interception. Daly was passing in the first half out of the shotgun again. Fakes it. He's going to try and carry. He tried to do that, and he's going to lose yardage on this one. He was one of their rushers. He carried three times, 23 yards in the first half for Daly as a runner. Well, Nowhere on that one. Yeah, they really like his ability as a quarterback to run. They've 
run effectively with McGill, Barrington Edwards, which creates an opportunity for the bootleg out the back door. But there, heads up by the uh, defense of Rutgers, shutting things down. Frank Signetti there, you see him sipping on a cold Diet Coke. <laughs> but boy, I'll tell you, he's not comfortable while he's sipping. This is a uh, timeout for an injury. Jason McCourty is down on the field. And uh, we may get some of this cramping now that's going to start on these players on the heat today. Let's get down the stairs again, Todd. Well, we talked about at the top of the show, Jess Holly. He's a native of New Jersey. And how just how personal this game. Now, he said he wasn't recruited very highly out of Rutgers. He said they were the 10th or 11th team to come calling, even though he's 20, 25 miles down the road. But today, normally he wears an underlined eye that says, rest in peace, grandmother, her grandmother, Yvonne, who passed away last year, who raised him. Today, Jersey's finest. Sending a message to the folks back in the Garden State. Yeah, right there. Jersey's finest. He really wanted this game. He's the only receiver for North Carolina returning who has had a catch in college football prior to today. And he's a leader on this football team. You sit down with him in meetings right away. The other guys defer to Jesse, Ho Jesse Holly, And he is the leader among the receivers. Want to see him get a catch in this football game. Though. Second down and 13. Daly fakes it. Not very well. Then dumps the screen off. Any room over there for McGill. He'll make some. Look at the second effort. Well shy of the first down, but he's over the original line of scrimmage to about the 47-yard line. A good play call by Frank Signetti there. You in second down and tremendously long yardage. All you're trying to do is get a little bit back so you can get to third down, a manageable down and distance, so you maybe cre maybe convert the third down for a first and keep this drive moving. Good, smart, safe call on the part of Frank Signetti. All right, three out of five, third down conversions. First half, North Carolina. They will get another shot at it here. Starting this third, it is a third down and a seven. And they will have three receivers. That's Foster, the man in motion, comes back near side. Daly, big rush, gets hit, and he'll be sacked. Back at the 44-yard line, Courtney Green, who had 68 team leading solo tackles last year, throws him for a loss of nine. Yeah, 116 on the season, but I'll tell you, just blitzing from that free safety position, sneaks up, and he times it just right. Right there, you're going to see him blitz. Joe Daly, nobody picks him up. McGill misses. The, the, uh, the left guard, Charleston Gray, misses. Left tackle, Chacos misses. Turn the football over right now. Forcing, the, forcing North Carolina to punt in a good defensive call. Punt will come back at about the 35-yard line when he puts his foot into it. Connor Barth, one kick, not good. This one gets higher down the middle. Fair catch call for taken at the 23-yard line. So Rutgers will take over. They've got the lead, 14-10. to 10. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. One of the heroes of the North Carolina football program is halfback Don McCauley. He was a Tar Heel from 68 through 70, a two-time ACC Player of the Year. He broke O.J. Simpson's single-season rushing record as a senior, and he was named a consensus All-American. He played in the NFL for 10 seasons with the Baltimore Colts, and he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2002. Don McCauley, a hero of the program. North Carolina star, numbers up there on the facade. Yeah. Great career. See the rushes he had. Averaged over five yards a carry and a lot of touchdowns. Gonna gonna bring you some of the names this football season of the guys who starred at their schools. Rutgers has the football. Teal looking over the middle. Dangerous pass caught. Whoa, Dougie at the near the 40 yard line. Sean Tucker. That's one of those where you gotta believe because you are wide open to be leveled. Boy, a nice in route there and well-timed on the part of Mike Teal, letting it go high and, and away from the defender, which allows for Sean Tucker to come up with a big-time catch. 16-yard gain on that. That'll be a first down and 10. Rutgers maybe going to try the air a little bit here. Teal was 8 for 12 in the first half. They'll carry this time 40. Great balance up to midfield. That is Ray Rice, who is going for his second 200-yard college football game and well on his way. Well, they know where the bread's buttered, and <laughs> that's for sure, is Ray Rice and uh, Brian Leonard. But right there, watch the block of his big fullback. Right there, clearing the way right there is Brian Leonard and Ray Rice following right behind him. Success, they've had tremendous success running the football right at the heart 
of that North Carolina defense. You saw Jeremy Zuda, number 71, uh, a tackle also taking his man down. Another first down, first and 10. Leonard, 23, is in that backfield again to lead the blocking, not this time. Rolling left, looking downfield, completed at the 35 yard line. Great pass to Clark Harris there, big tight end, as Watkins came in to drive him out of bounds. Their number one receiver gets his first catch of the day. And you see the possession chart for Rutgers today. At first, their first drive, the touchdown, the 63 yards. Then right there, the fumble, touchdown, punt. But they have managed the football very well. The time of possession, over 20 minutes in this football game. You have it longer than the other guys, guess what? You have more chances and opportunities to put points on the board. Three plays and three first downs on this drive. Rutgers driving into North Carolina territory. Handoff will come straight up the middle to about the 30-yard line. Again, it is Ray Rice on the carry. And Kareem Taylor, who's uh, had a... Uh, to meet him a lot gets another tackle. They've gone back to that good mix of run and pass. You saw the very first play, big time pass and an in route coming in into uh, the center of the screen by Sean Tucker. You saw later a nice run by Ray Rice back to Clark Harris, the All-American tight end on a little bootleg and shallow cross from the other side. Good mixture of play call. They've got this defense uh, second guessing themselves now. This will be a second down and seven after the gain of three. The flip back Again, Rice, he will get to the 30-yard line and then be driven back. You know this North Carolina defense is all over him. Mark Pascal helping to lead the charge there along with Chase Rice on the hit. I'll tell you, I'll be the first to admit that I'm surprised at the success in which Rutgers is having running directly at this North Carolina defense. I saw the speed on the outside edges. I saw throw screen passes to Brian Leonard out on the edge. But they have basically just taken it and said, look, I'm going to punch you in the mouth until you stop me from punching. They're running supposedly at North Carolina's strength. A third down and five, 29-yard line for Rutgers. Brian Leonard is in there. Rutgers five for seven, third down conversions. We'll have to wait as flags go down on the snap. Not had a lot of penalties in this game. The ones we've had have Part generally been the clock. Full start on the offense. Number 77. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Report featuring scores and highlights. John Craig and Doug back in New York will have it for you. Great to have you with us for this one, the opener for both Rutgers and North Carolina as football is underway for real. Uh, Craig Versteeg, the offensive coordinator there, he's had a nice game of call and plays and you'd always talk about the quarterback getting in a rhythm guess what the coordinator who calls those plays they've got to get in a rhythm as well Rutgers just second their second penalty now out of the shotgun Teal looking downfield finds a man in the open at the 25 24 yard line and driven out of bounds and that is Dennis Campbell another one of these young receivers that Rutgers is running in and out of the game Boy, I tell you and he's doing a fabulous job Mike Teal spreading the football around look at the eye down the field waiting on the corner route and bang right there the ball's out on time nice tight spiral Dennis Campbell runs a nice corner route for him three years high school starter has played a lot of football this red shirt last year a lot of good receivers on this football team and now having the opportunity to step up and make some plays that young man's doing it today they are going to measure for the first down teal last year appeared in nine games three as a starter he hit 51 out of 101 passes, 50%, and uh, had 10 interceptions. That was a big concern. He gets the first down on this one. And I'll tell you what, the interceptions come from trying to force the football. What he's gotten better about during the spring and summer camps is basically taking what the defense gives you, don't force the football, and if it's not there, throw it away. We saw it in the first half. He didn't have anything, slung it into the stands. He's hit on his last six passes. So being precise with the football, taking what the defense is giving him. And if you got to take a hit for a loss, go ahead. That's right. Leonard is in the backfield, the lone set, first down and 10. They're at the North Carolina 30-yard line, long count for Teal. Leonard out of the backfield, great push by the defensive line. He'll still gain three yards, was not driven out of bounds. Let's check in again with Matt Weiner. 
Gary, here's our vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Troy Smith looking every bit the Heisman candidate, hooked up with Ted Ginn Jr. twice in the first half. 13 of 17, three touchdowns all before halftime. To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword is Pontiac. Gary, back to you. Well, those two guys have played a lot of football together, high school. I'll tell you, a lot of good chemistry between them. Second down and eight, and this is going to be a loss. Rice came into the backfield, but wait a minute, late flag going down. I look for the, maybe a face mask here. That would be a big call, and the Tar Heels fans realizing it. A big defensive play may end up being nullified here. Rice standing there waiting to hear what the call is. He's jerking on that face mask. And that's the initial sign. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. Could have been worse. The unintentional on the face mask. And Rutgers will uh, have the football and driving here and see what they can do. Their fourth straight possession where they've gone over 60 yards. Been a relatively clean football game. Only eight total penalties. And that's, that's kind of... It's nice to see that in the, especially the opening game of the season. You know, we had not a lot of false starts and guys jumping off and things of that sort, holding penalties that you expect to see in the very opening or the very first game of the season. And both these coaches, Andre, were worried about that because yeah. both last year had in the both coaches said too many penalties and at the inopportune times of the game. So both had asked their team, look, we've got to correct that if we're going to win more football games. Little discussion now about that last call. No question that it was the uh, well, face mask. Right at the end, right there, wrapping him up. Number 92, E.J. Wilson. You see him just graze the face mask just enough to get the, the attention of the official. And a free five yards and second down and medium where you want to live if you're on offense. Second down and five. Rice stays in the backfield. They'll move those receivers around. Leonard. Moves uh, back as the blocker in the backfield. Hand off straight ahead Rice. Rice good hold. Good opening there as he'll take the ball down to about the 16 yard line. He had a little room there. He's always got at least two of those offensive linemen in front of him. Well what's, what's happening down here is North Carolina choosing to play zone defense. So you got a lot of people. Look at all these spaces right in here of the defense. Nice little running lanes. And now right there you see Ray Rice reading it out and just taking positive yards. You are catching if you're playing zone and waiting on guys as opposed to being aggressive and going to get him. Rutgers having their way right now. Third down and two. Rice in the backfield on the pitch to him. He'll get the first down and more as he gets inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. He has been unstoppable today. It's been Rice on Rice, but Ray's the one who's getting the yardage, and Chase is doing just that. That right is the 10th first down that Rice has had on wow. the ground. I mean, just having their way. You watch the left guard here just coming out, and he's going to clear the way right there for Ray Rice. And then get behind those big bodies, nice body on a body. Just Right now, North Carolina's in a catch mode. They're not firing off, and I don't know if it's from being tired, but Rutgers getting out of the blocks, into bodies, and getting tremendous push up front. They go into the shotgun on the first and 10. Rice on the carry, finds room, touchdown! From 10 yards out, Ray Rice takes it in again for Rutgers. Right there to congratulate him, Brian Leonard, the unselfish hero of that offense. Going to lead him. You see the block right there by Brian Leonard. Frees up Ray Rice and allows him to get into the end zone. Boy, I'll tell you. What a heck of a football player that just kind of flies under the radar. A lot of people are going to recognize Ray Rice as well as Brian Leonard. They're one and the same self unselfish players playing in the backfield together. That is the third touchdown that Rice has put on the board today. Jeremy Ito will come on for the extra point again. And his point after is up. And it is good. Rice has scored on a two-yard run. He has scored on a seven-yard run. He scores on another 10-yard run, but more importantly, involved in all of the offense. ESPN College Football on ABC. And now 
it's the Tar Heels fans trying to generate some offense as Rutgers puts another one up on the board and extends their lead for Rice his first three touchdown game. In fact he had only five touchdowns last year. He's got three <laughs> here in the first game and we're not even in the fourth quarter yet. Boy I tell you what he rests for just over 5.7 yards a carry and he just off the charts today just dominating and they're doing it with long drives as well Ito kicks that one off North Carolina will get it back it'll be taken inside by Tate 15 turns to the outside 20 and up to the 25 yard line Tate has had to do it the tough way from the end zone but he's done it twice today Todd Harris well, right now, it's not North Carolina that's invincible. It looks like Rutgers. But the movie that came out on the 25th about Vince Papali, a bartender who made the Philadelphia Eagles after an open trout, it was released. And there's a character in that movie, none other than Carolina head coach John Bunning, played by actor Dean Ross Burke. Now, Bunning, whose character does not have a speaking role, was a member of the Eagles when Dick Vermeil held the trout in 76. And Papali made the team. And here's a picture. There you see Vince. A couple of famous names. Ron Jaworski, our ESPN. Harold Carmichael's there. Quite a crew right there. Coach Bunning on the left-hand side. But uh, he has no desire, though, to be in the movies. Right now he's got his hands full of Rutgers. Yeah, that's right. He's got, got yeah. a tough, tough task ahead of him today. They look to the flat second time. They have come out here, and that will be taken to the 30-yard line. Hakeem Mix has shown the ability not only to catch the ball, Andre, but do something with it after he's got it. You know, and they've gotten away a couple of times, Gary, with just popping the football out to Hakeem Nix and allowing for him to get some positive yards on the outside. But they've been four catches now for Nix. But they've been very protective with Daly in this football game. And at some stage, you trail 21-10, you got to start taking some shots with Joe, Joe, Joe Daly down the field gambling in the passing game and relying on your quarterback. Plenty of time left, 240 left to go here in the third. Daly will hand that one off straight ahead and this Rutgers defense, what a job they've done. Ronnie McGill again obviously keyed on Jamal Westerman who is said to be the leader of this team in his defensive end position moves in and puts the hit on. Don't miss the premier Saturday night football Heisman hopeful. Brady Quinn will lead number two Notre Dame in their quest for the national title. Georgia Tech will have something to say about that tonight. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, part of the Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend on ABC. One of the nation's best, the best receiver in the nation. Of course, you know, by, in my opinion, Calvin Johnson, a treat to watch. Barrington Edwards, it is a third down and six. Edwards in the backfield on the 29-yard line, looking near side on an out pattern. It's caught, immediate tackle, very close to a first down at the 35-yard line. Brooks Foster tried to make sure he was there. Joe Porter gave him no steps, though, and hit him as soon as he caught it. Well, he was right there to make a play, but I'll tell you what, good heads up play on the part of Brooks Foster. You got to get to the first down marker a couple of times in this football game, knowing where the down and distance is, where you got to get to. That young man, young receiver, just a sophomore, but the presence in mind of knowing where you are on the field, picking up the first down. First down and 10, Edwards still in the backfield. There he is with a carry and trips. As he came across the line of scrimmage, he may be credited with a yard on that. Barrington Edwards is a junior, a transfer out of LSU. He was benched for the last two games last year. He talked too much yeah. and didn't get enough done on the field. Said he was all talk, you know, all bark and no bite. And uh, Coach John Bunning got a little sick and tired of it. And then one practice, he spiked the football, almost drove the coach crazy. Set him on the bench for a while. He has been a good citizen in the North Carolina program since then. That has changed, and he's showing it here. A second down and 11. Second and 11 as they mark it back where his knee hit. Looking to pass for the first down over the middle. Incomplete. Should have been caught. It was Jesse Hawley, their leading receiver, who couldn't hang on to that. It had some zip on it, but he, he says right off my fingers. Yeah, and he said yesterday in the meetings that, you know, I, I want the football. When Joe Daly, when it's a, a critical time in a drive, I want Joe to know he can come to me. Well, guess what? If he comes to you, you better catch the football. Don't have it bounce off your hands and into the secondary. You have to make the most of the opportunities. Only thrown to him one time today. Got to come up with that catch for your quarterback. He had 47 receptions last year for North Carolina. 
Daly had hit five in a row before that. Now it brings up the third down and the 11. Third and 11 for North Carolina. Big rush from the ends over the middle. It's complete. The defender fell down into Rutgers territory at the 41-yard line. Brooks Foster is making his presence known. A 25-yard game. And we talked about having to take some gambles with Joe Daly in the passing game. And guess who's stepping up big? The sophomore, Brooks. Brooks Foster right here working inside, gets away from the defender, and now the run after the catch. Those rack yards are special when you got a guy who can get you some little bit extra. Hit him underneath, hit him in the, in the curl routes or in routes, and then a little add to the passing yards yeah. for me. He knows what he's doing out there. Foster does. Yeah. He's, running, he's running some great routes. First down to 10, North Carolina now able to pick up that big third down conversion. Time running out here in the third. Barrington Edwards again on the draw play, and again, it's Rutgers who's going to throw him for a loss. That worked a little in the first half, but Rutgers has adjusted. I, I don't like the delays that North Carolina in the run game that they're running. They've had better success when they get the ball and get downhill behind those two big guys on the left side, Gray and Chacos. Get back to that with McGill and Edwards, not the pitter pat in the backfield. Get at North, get at Rutgers defense. Brandon Reichert is down on the field. We'll check in on him when we get back. Rutgers has the 21 to 10 lead. Three quarters complete. ESPN's presentation to college football at ABC returns after this from your ABC stations. On Channel 7 Eyewitness News. We are ready to go here in the final fourth quarter. College football, Rutgers 21, North Carolina 10, and this is not over. Bear in mind for North Carolina, when Rutgers has had the football today, they've established long, time-consuming play series. That's why these third down conversions and picking up first downs are so important for North Carolina. They've got to keep the football. They can't give it up here down 21 to 10. They will work it here from midfield, looking deep, and a man open in the seam, caught, great pass. Hakeem Nix at the 25-yard line, over one and under the other defender. And you talk about feeling it right now, Joe Daly, feeling it, and spreading the football around Brooks Foster, and now Hakeem Nix right here. Nice corner route, good separation by both guys, and dropping it in on a dime is Joe Daly. Reading coverage out, we talked about relying on the quarterback, you can't keep him you know blanketed protected cut him loose and right now he is responding and helping his football team with Nebraska in 2003 when he was their starter he passed for 2025 yards he can throw the football the question is can he can can he control it on the running play cutting back inside to the almost got away at the 15 Ronnie McGill he had one tackler behind him between him and a touchdown well, they went away from Ronnie McGill in this football game. Maybe the cramps are starting to settle in, and that's why we didn't see him, a little bit more of him. But, boy, he had great success in the first quarter when they responded on the 80-yard drive. And we didn't see much of him, and now all of a sudden reasserting himself back into this football game. Todd? Well, you guys talk about Ronnie McGill and meeting with the coaches yesterday. They say he has, he has a propensity for cramping, almost a disorder like that causes him to cramping. So he's looking at about 25 carries a game. But on the Rutgers side, the problem there is they had a moment where they had two of their starters out. Jason McCourty, the left corner where they've been attacking the last three plays, and their linebacker, Brandon Rankart. Now, they don't give out medical information, but for Rankart, they were working on his left elbow. And Jason McCourty, second time he's gone to the bench, getting his right ankle taped. Yeah, and then, you know, they talked about in the secondary as well. They got a lot of defensive backs that they like. So they shuffle a lot of them in, not afraid to substitute with defensive backs. All equally talented. Big series right here for North Carolina. They've got the first down at 10. Holly is the man in motion. Comes back the other way. Another flat pass near side. Brooks Foster. And he gets up to the 10. Almost. It was a piling on. Yeah. That's a bad play right there for Rutgers. An unnecessary, costly penalty. And, and what I like about what Brooks Foster does on this play, Gary, is that he takes the football, he catches it, moves it from the inside where the defenders are coming, shuffles it to the outside arm. Personal foul on the defense. Number 36. Half the distance to the goal. On that. First down. 
Low late hit, but you see the little pop pass out here. It's inside. I'm going to go outside, shuffle the ball over. And now you cannot put a helmet on the football to pop it out right there. Taking care of the football but the wide receiver. Good job. And there the late hit comes in. Going to add a little more. And North Carolina going to make this a football game, fella. Yes, they are. There is Courtney Green who took that call. It is now a first down and goal. Barrington Edwards is in the backfield. North Carolina overloads to the near side. One receiver on the right side is Brooks Foster. They run to the strength to the five and no turn there for Barrington Edwards. Well, no you, room. You talk about the strength of this North Carolina offensive line. It is definitely on the left side. Two starters with 41 combined starts. Gray and Chacos. The other side, all new guys. Three new guys on the right side. But the majority of the runs in this football game have been to the left side of the formation. Look for them to go right back between those big guys right there. That's what it's working at. Gray, a freshman All-American in 04. Chacos, a sixth year left tackle, 24 years old, his 24th start. It is second down and goal at the Rutgers four-yard line. North Carolina, again, they bring Holly in motion. This time he'll roll out that way, looking for Holly, the short man, Holly, and he'll be driven out of bounds. Great defensive play by Courtney Green in a one-on-one. -on -one. Courtney Green was a freshman All-American, on the freshman All-American team last year, led him with 116 tackles. That's a lot of tackles from a free safety. You know what it means? A lot of people getting into that the, the secondary, a lot of big, big runs and big passes but there for sure tackle on a good wide receiver stopping him from getting into the end zone how about this defense by Rutgers they now bring it up to a third down and goal the ball still at the four yard line or three yard line North Carolina trying to punch one in trailing 21 to 10 he'll give off to Barrington Edwards cuts back up the middle Well, what you've done is got this crowd back into the football game, and as a player, you start to feed off that right now. Everybody's thinking left, we're going to go right, but to, behind the inexperienced part of the offensive line, and Barrington Edwards there breaking a tackle. Sometimes you got to do it as a running back, especially close down to the goal line. Guys hanging on you right there, fighting and getting your nose into the end zone. Good effort by Barrington Edwards, the junior. He puts it in. Now a, an important extra point coming up here. You see where he hit. Whoa. And we're going to get this reviewed. Mm -hmm. That ball may not have crossed the line. The replay official has already called down, and they have stopped play. Well, you see it right here, right there. Barrington Edwards, the football is just about right on the goal line is where it came down. And I mean, we're going to get a, a good look. This is the replay that's being called from upstairs. Every play is reviewed. And if the replay official deems it necessary, he has a buzzer yep. system with the referee where he can buzz the official and say, stop the game. We want to look at this a little more. And that's what's going on right now. The ruling on the field was touchdown. So there has to be unequivocal evidence if you will yep. on the video that in fact he was down right there you see him and right there the football that's not a good angle right there but it looked like he just came up just a little bit short another angle for you right here the nice cut back breaking tackles good run nonetheless but I think Whoa. he's down the football hit he was down before he kind of spun and got it across the goal line you see it right there the replay, right there. the replay rule says indisputable evidence. So it has to be indisputable that he was not in in order to overrule There's the, the on-field decision that he was in. Yeah, the football is just, it's down. It's short. There's indisputable video evidence that the runner's knee was down before the ball broke the plane to the goal line. We have fourth down on the foot guard line. Partner, wow. you were right. Absolutely right, and, and, it's, and a good call and a good catch by the officials, and that's what it's designed to do. Get the calls right. You see it right here as he falls. There's the football, and it's not across the goal line. It is down before, and an excellent call on the part of the officials. That's what the replay is all about, to get it right. That's exactly right. And no question there. So now it is fourth down and goal to goal from a one. 
the most important play of this football game to this moment it, comes right here. You talked about it, having to punch it in and score on this drive. Right now, John Bunning trying to punch it in. Garrett Gregciano trying to stop him. Right now, it's mano a mano up front. Look for North Carolina to go left with this football. Edwards and McGill are both in there. Edwards is a double set. They go up the middle. No sign. There's no sign of a TD. The football apparently came loose at some point. It is a fumble. They let the play go on. It is recovered by Rutgers. A fumble at the goal line is picked up and returned out to about the 19-yard line. And there's going to be another discussion. William Beckford, the defensive end for Rutgers, came away with a football. Ronnie McGill had it, but it was a long time before he came out of this pile. Right, Ronnie McGill checks in as the fullback, and they just try to get a quick hitter inside. I'm very surprised at, at the play call and not trying to get Barrington Edwards up and over the top because he's an athletic tailback or McGill dot in the eye and getting him up and over. But I'll tell you a couple of things here. Rutgers going to get the football with pretty good field position, even if they'd stopped them right there. But the fumble, it comes out. Oh, man. That's what, gonna, and look at him dig for the football. That, that right play there, is dead. Up. That play is dead. Not if the whistle hadn't blown. How can it not have blown? <laughs> I mean, his forward progress had stopped completely. And then Beckford just dug in with the pile with everybody Boy, stationary. That, that is a heads-up football play right there. I think that ball should How be How do you back. even see the football in a pileup like that if you're the linebacker? Right there. What a job by number 55, DeVaron Thompson, going over the top and basically stopping Ronnie McGill. Stops the momentum, and then there you see William Beckford just digging it out. They're going back upstairs again. I think this ball's got to be spotted at the one-yard line. Now, I agree with you. If the whistle hadn't blown, but how could it not have blown? There's no more forward progress What's going it? on here. What you don't know in replay. And no forward progress, but you don't know when the whistle's been blown. So you, now you got to defer to what happens or how it was called on the field. And if they're saying, well, we didn't blow it dead, Rutgers going to get this football in some pretty it, it, good field position considering where they would have had it on the one-yard line. Todd, what, what are they saying down there? Well, Gary, I was right on the goal line when it happened, and I agree with Andre. There was no whistle called. His forward progress was clearly stopped, and he was short of the end zone, and they kept digging for it, but the officials did not blow it. And to review, the play stands as Cole, first and ten, Rutgers. And we're going to listen, and just listen for the whistle. It doesn't blow, so it doesn't stop things. Yeah, but look at the officials. The officials from both sides of the field yeah. came in as though the play was over. They, they stopped. They, they came in as if it was stopped, but nobody blew the whistle, wow. so you got to defer to the, the whistle not being blown. Rutgers dodging a big, big-time blow that there. Is a, and take nothing away from the Rutgers defense. That play was stopped. That'll be carried up to the 25, 30, 35, and near the 40, Ray Rice. North Carolina's now got to regroup in a hurry. It's they have suffered a big blow here, but they can't let Rutgers just run the football. They suffered a big blow, but I didn't like the play call to begin with. I mean, I, I really didn't. You, you have two athletic guys. McGill, who has just been churning out yardage uh, on the left side of the formation over and over. Line up and just give him the football. Give him the option of going over the top. You take that away from him when you line him up at fullback and run him into the offensive line. At that point, it's who gets the best left leverage and push there Rutgers did. Rutgers line has done a great job today. Rice in that backfield a first down at 10 11 54 to go fourth quarter. Hill on the handoff again straight ahead. It'll be carried up to the 45 flags are down on the play as North Carolina tries to regroup after a, an apparent touchdown was ruled not across the line. A fourth down and a yard play ends up being a fumble a 14 play drive by Carolina came up with nothing. Worse than that, they gave up the ball. On Rutgers, number 53. Ten-yard penalty remains first down. Well, you talked about the importance of North Carolina getting points on that drive because the clock is ticking down. But Rutgers just churning out yardage on the ground and keeping the clock running as they're effective running it down their throats. You see here, here are the key plays right here. Not getting into the end zone. It's Barrington Edwards right here. The officials got this one right. They mark it short. And then the big play and the turnover. Right there, digging it out. Beckford.
Wow. And all of a sudden, the game turns around, and it's in the favor of Rutgers. Now North Carolina's defense has got the rise to the occasion here. First down and 20 after the penalty screen pass. That will be carried to the 35-yard line by Ray Rice again. That's nowhere near a first down. In fact, they're five yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. So with that penalty, Carolina's now got a chance to get out of this with just one series well, to get the ball back. What you're thinking is if, okay, if we don't make it, now we got to pin down, we can be aggressive defensively. But then when Beckford comes out of there with a the football, now you got some room to work with. All of a sudden, it's demoralizing. You saw it on the first play. They go to Rice, big run. All of a sudden, the defense is, you know, they're, they're tired. They want, you know, they, they wanted the opportunity to be aggressive, and you took that right away from them. Second down and uh, 14. Under center, teal, and a whistle on the snap. And now we're getting more flags here in the last couple of minutes than we've had for most of the football game, and part of that may be the heat and some tired players. Part of the snap. False start on the offense. Number 53. Five-yard penalty remains second down. So Rutgers becoming their own worst enemy here on this series after they recovered that fumble. They have now picked up consecutive penalties and are driving themselves backwards. It'll be second down and 19. Second and 19. See if they put it up in the air. They bring Clark Harris to the near side, that big tight end. Teal on the long count. North Carolina does not jump. They'll try and run it. It'll be enough to get it up to the 34. Ray Rice again, but not again. Long way from the first down. After winning the back-to-back -back majors in each of the last four, Tiger Woods looks to continue that great run that he is on. The Labor Day weekend showdown, some of the biggest names in golf. Join ABC in Boston for the Deutsche Bank Championships tomorrow, 5 Eastern, and Monday, 3 Eastern, right here. Yeah, Justin Rose and Robert Allenby lead the tournament at 6 under, but guess who's lurking? Tiger Always. Woods right there at four under right where he wants to be going into the final day tomorrow. Third down and 14. Rutgers out of the shotgun. Four receivers out. They go down the middle midfield. Caught at the 45 yard line. A huge first down. Dennis Campbell takes it from Mike Teal. Boy, you can see the confidence building in the young quarterback, Mike Teal. That's why he was recruited, to be the face of this Rutgers football team. Just took him a year to get there. And all of a sudden, look at this pass. Right on the money, outside shoulder of his receiver stepping up. Rutgers capable of a shootout with anybody. Teal has hit on his last eight passes a special afternoon hadn't thrown one in the end zone yet but boy has he managed the football game well and a big third down conversion Rutgers eight out of ten in that department now great numbers on third down first and ten teal there in North Carolina territory the defense North Carolina being called on again to try and get it done and Ray Rice pulling his way forward looking for that 200 yard game guy moved in and put the hit on yeah, I got a chance. I went down. I wanted to see. I like being down on the field before the game, watching the quarterbacks throw, the receivers work. And this kid, Mike Teal, can make every throw. He can drop it in over the top. You saw it right there when he needs to put it on the line and throw it hard. He can do that as well. He can make all the throws. He's a good leader. Had a rough freshman year last season. But, boy, has he settled in to this 06 season so far. Rice has got 193 yards so far in this game. He remains in the backfield. He'll get another chance at it. Comes to the near side, and he's going to take a loss on this one. He did not end up out of bounds. A lot of new blue. Follow him over to the sideline. Zuda trying to block for him along with Johnson, but Rice, he uh, just ran out of room to make a turn. 21-10, Rutgers on top. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Well, that career high, 217. And yeah, plenty of time. Eight, oh, eight, get down around eight minutes. That's not. He could, he could get the, to the career high. Look at that, though. Did Seven that yards a carry. That is some production. He is a magnificent game. Brian Leonard, the big talk about Heisman Hope, has been the blocker. It is a third down and six. Again, can the Carolina defense rise up and get it? And that's going to be incomplete. There are no flags, and they may have just done it. They are out of field goal range here. With 7.53 left to go, North Carolina is going to get an opportunity at the football. Yeah, Mark Pichel, nice job of getting to the quarterback, 
disrupting the rhythm of Mike Teal. And North Carolina going to get an opportunity here. They, it, it's in a stage now, Gary, where you got to have points. You talked about it on the last drive. It's critical now that you go down and get something on the scoreboard. Joe Radigan has come on. They held the ball for over five minutes, even though they didn't get that first down. Only their second punt. Radigan averaging almost 40 yards last year. High snap, hauls it in. He's going for the sideline. See if he gets the bounce. He will. It'll go out of bounds inside the 15 yard line, and that's where North Carolina will take over first and 10. Now it is up to the offense. They are down 21 10. You like Sissy? You like Rice? Yeah, you definitely like Rice if you're Rutgers. Right here, the scoring of Ray Rice over the left side, getting, him in, getting himself into the end zone right there. Back again to the heart of the defense of North Carolina, and you'll see the cutback right here. Right back out the backside, Ray Rice. Three touchdowns on the afternoon for Rutgers. Here's our Pacific Life game summary for Rutgers. You see the 195 yards and three TDs. Teal 140. In the air, McGill for North Carolina, 95 yards daily, 14-21, 137, one interception, one rush TD. But that big play that North Carolina had a chance to score on and didn't right now looms large and a long way to go for the Tar Heels. Barrington Edwards in the backfield. Joe Daly will work out of the shotgun. Rutgers drops back, deep coverage. It'll be taken on the near side. They'll allow those catches under the defense. Brooks Foster gets that one. You know what? It's okay if you're catching them quick and you're getting yourself out of bounds because you're stopping the clock and saving some time. But right now, a good portion of this football game, and you want it as a quarterback. I mean, you want the game on your shoulders. You want to be able to lead your football team down from a come-from-behind type situation. Give me the opportunity right now. Joe Daly's going to have that opportunity for his football team. They've got the ball here on a second down and a two. Not a lot of time to just churn first down. Chance for a bomb on second down. They come near side again intercepted, taken out of bounds. Again, it is Brooks Foster, and that is going to be enough for a first down. His seventh catch. Todd. 87-43. That was what Rutgers players heard via a bullhorn from Coach Shiana throughout summer workouts. As the players labored in the summer heat, Coach Shiana would take to the stands and repeat, 87-43, 87-43. And that's not Gary Thorne's ATM code, but the aggregate total that the Rutgers team was outscored by opponents in the fourth quarter last year. A trend Coach Shiano says they have to reverse this year, and so far, mission accomplished. Hey, I had his wallet. I thought he hey. thought that was the code. It'd be worth something. Don't be given though. They're going to ring it. Back out of the shotgun again, near side. How about this busy receiver? Three in a row. Brooks Foster has hauled in. He's open. They're moving the football, and they're stopping the clock. And the surprise is we thought Jesse Holly was going to be the go-to guy. All of a sudden, it's the youngster. Brooks Foster has established himself as Joe Daly's go-to guy right there. Nice hard stick inside, separating from the defensive back, and delivering the football is Daly. North Carolina on the move, and they're serve, saving time in this drive. Foster's had eight receptions for the 89 yards. Good news for Rutgers. Brandon Rankert is back in there, the linebacker who came out earlier. Out of the shotgun again, it will be Daly. Three receivers near side. Fake to Edwards, come near on the turn back. They got it, and it'll be at the 47-yard line. And Brooks Foster appears to be the only man out there ready to catch the football. He's wide open. A little sample of the spread offense. Show it inside to the running back and then allow the receivers to work. You got the run pass option. And there, Joe Daly works it to perfection, going right back to where the bread's buttered. Brooks Foster's on the outside. They're moving the football here, and that clock, 7.09, left to go in the fourth. It's a two-possession game for them. So they've got to get this downfield. That's why they're staying out of the shotgun. Again, Daly in all kinds of movement. Looked like that interior line uh, came up. Chacos, I think, number 65, guilty of movement. Right snap, Matt. Ball start on the offense. Number 65. Five-yard penalty. Remains first there. And Chacos, the big sixth-year guy, petitioned the NCAA right there. A little false start. Big fella ready to get in his pass stance, but you got to be patient. Can't hurt the football team, and it is a critical drive for North Carolina. That'll drop him back again. The clock will start, and it'll be a first down and 15 now. Daily 18 out of 25, 174 yards. At it again. Found him again, and he tiptoes down the sideline. 
Brooks Foster played in five games as a reserve last year and did not have a catch. I tell you so what, he's having a record day with 10 receptions so far. And he walked on to the 05 National Championship basketball team where he played in five games there too. So you talk about a tremendous athlete. And what I've been impressed with with his ability to get into zone coverage hide a little bit and all of a sudden that big 6-3 frame shows up. He's got great hands and gets himself out of bounds conserving time. A lot of room because North Carolina lost four of their top five receivers so there's room to grow in those positions for these younger players. Again out of the shotgun big rush that's going to be caught near the first down. Guess who? Foster, <laughs> Foster's right, Foster's left, Foster's in the middle. It's not Bananas Foster's either. It's, 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 it's Brooks Foster. That one though is now this is where you got to regroup in a hurry. As soon as the ball is spotted for play, the clock will start. They got the first down and North Carolina gets up there in a hurry. I'll tell you, they've thrown a lot of passes in the offseason. They are in a group with one another. You know a receiver's body language, and right now Joe Daly working Brooks Foster. That one's over the middle, and that one's going to be incomplete. Foster had caught six, has caught six passes on this drive. Jesse Hawley was the intended receiver. Ron Geralt, though, the junior strong safety had him covered. Some guys just get it. I mean, and whether they're young or not, they're good football players, and Brooks Foster is going to be a good football player for this North Carolina football team. Now, regardless of the outcome of today, he and Joe Daly have worked out some type of chemistry where they understand and Jay Daly knows his body language, knows when to deliver him the football, and is going to count on it. He has been his first look today. It is a second down and ten. Daly again back. He's got time. Throws into the flats again for Foster. This time, though, it's going to be incomplete. It will stop the clock, and while they're regrouping, we'll check in with Matt Weiner. Gary, time for a singular All-America Player of the Week update. Steve Slayton has run himself into the discussion. 28 carries today, 188 yards and counting. A couple of touchdowns to boot. Text vote to 87654 on your singular wireless phone to vote. Lots of names as the season begins. In contention for all kinds of the great individual awards. That will be whittled down by game play. That's right. Third down and ten. North Carolina's got to get one. They got two chances for the first time. They'll run the screen. Brandon Edwards. Edwards charging will get it on a second and third effort. You saw him hold the football out because he knew where that first yeah. down marker was. And what I was impressed with was his ability to get north and south. He didn't hesitate. He didn't try to, to, to set anybody up. He get, immediately got down the field. And right here, you see the second effort, nice spin move, and stretching right there for the first down. He learned uh, when the touchdown wasn't scored to hear this afternoon That's that right. you might want to put that, stick that ball out. Stick that ball out there. <laughs> They're going to measure it here. That'll be uh, actually a break on the measurement for North Carolina to rest this offensive unit, which is not substituted much here on this drive. How many times in this drive was North Carolina, when they needed to make a play, Joe Daly makes a play to Brooks Foster. All of a sudden, you get Barrington Edwards making a play. Joe Daly with a nice throw for a first down. Faced with some tough, tough situations during this drive, and they have stepped up and responded, conserving some time on the clock to go along with it. They've still got a chance. Put this in, get an offside kick kind of thing is what you're looking at here in the fourth quarter. But first, you got to get that touchdown. And back again, Daly, under a rush, wide open. Turns to the middle on the spin, and he will get up to the 20-yard line and a first down and a flag. Yeah, late hates to go along with it. The second late hit penalty against Rutgers in this game. How athletic is Joe Daly? Ooh, can he pull it down and run with it? And he likes to. I mean, he <laughs> likes to yes, run. Yes, indeed. He came out of a scramble quarterback situation Dead originally. Ball. Personal foul on the defense. Number 55. Half the distance of the goal. Automatic. Touchdown. Now you talk about deep, deep drops in the secondary. Provides a lot of green pasture for Joe Daly. Look at that move. I mean, athletic quarterback seeing it down the field. I got to pull it down, and now I got a lot of green grass. Make a guy miss. And right here, the late hit coming in. Right there, piling on. Number 55, Devin Thompson. And all of a sudden, North Carolina operating close again, Gary. That penalty is enormous. That is a 10-yard run. Then you tack on a 10-yard penalty. You get a first down here for North Carolina with 549 left on that clock. And this is where the rule about setting that clock matters. 
Less time, fewer chances. Daly backpedaling, tries to throw it. Flag is down. And they're going to have a holding penalty. All of a sudden, you're asking those big offensive linemen to hold up a little bit too long. The big center, Scott Lenahan. Ball got tipped, but it uh, would have been coming back anyway. It will stop the clock, and again, at least that Tar Heels unit. Holding. On the offense, number 65, 10-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay, first down. Yeah, it's big Brian Chacos, sixth-year senior right here. You see him right there. He's holding up. He's fine right there, holding up, holding up. Now you got to disengage and let the defensive end go. You hold him, you get some of that jersey. That official standing right there. Sometimes you get tired. This has been a long drive for those big grunts up front. Still work to be done. It is a first down and goal, but the ball's all the way back to the 20-yard line. First and goal from the 20. Daly out of the gun, over the middle, and he's caught at the four-yard line. Another flag back where the quarterback got hit late. And Jesse Hawley makes the catch. And this is a big-time throw, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, stepping in there, knowing you're going to take one in the chops. And Joe Daly has earned my respect today. This is a throw right here. Squeeze it in. Rough uh. passer on the defense. Number 55. Blow to the head. Pass the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Boy, two big penalties by Devron Thompson Ooh. has cost this Rutgers football team and there's more than enough time. You punch it in, you don't have to have an onside kick. You can get a stop, plenty of time to get another possession and go down either tie this game up or go ahead. But boy, what about the job of uh, Joe Daly leading his football team from nowhere to get him in this situation. Now it is a first down and goal. The effect of that penalty was the first down. It's from the two, they're gonna lob it into the corner. And they are in this football game. Hakeem Nix on the reception from Joe Daly. There'll be little talk about a backup quarterback or a two quarterback system. It's over with. At North it's, Carolina. This is Joe Daly's football team. And how can you not cheer for a guy who was basically thrown to the scrap heap in Nebraska? Recognized that he was 14, wouldn't have an opportunity to play there anymore. Comes and transfers to North Carolina, sits out the year, and delivers a performance like this. Now, are you going to go for two? 21 to 16. I think you got plenty of time. It looks like they're going to go for two right now. Daly was 9 for 11 on that drive, and he was talking to the sideline with 5.09 to go in the fourth. They're going to go for the two-point conversion right here. Well, you're down here, and I agree with it wholeheartedly because you may not get this opportunity again. At this point, you convert. All you need is a field goal. See what Daly can do with it as they have the two receivers to the right side. Want to pass over the middle. It'll be intercepted incomplete, intended for Brooks Foster. The two-point conversion does not work as that one went to Joe Porter. But the touchdown by Daly, the beautiful corner pass, ends an 89-yard drive. Rutgers 21, North Carolina 16. This one is not over. There you see the scores put up by Rutgers. North Carolina coming back on the last drive, covering 89 yards and 12 plays. The great pass into the end zone. Daly wants the football back. Rutgers is going to get it. And he wanted, we'll see. wanted the opportunity to lead his football team back into this game. If you're trailing 12 plays, 89 yards, and he delivers the punch, now, defense, go out and give me one more shot at it. Yep. Just one more shot. They have battled back to make this a football game for North Carolina. And you know Rutgers is thinking about last year when they thought they had a game put away against Illinois. Yeah. Ended up losing the opener. Connor Barth puts that one up in the air. It's going to be taken at the 12-yard line. Foster, and he will be stopped at the 29-yard line where Rutgers will take over first and 10. Todd Harris. Well, Gary, ever since spring, it was quarterback controversy here at Chapel Hill, and I asked Coach Bunny. He said it's the closest quarterback competition he has had in some time. I asked offensive coordinator Frank Signetti to compare these two quarterbacks. He was quick to call Cam Sexton a Jake Plummer Jr., but daily he paused and said, I think we'll find out together. And right now, gentlemen, he's got a little bit of John Elway in him. 
I have a feeling there's a little more of wanted competition than question of who the quarterback was. <laughs> no, it, it, really exactly, do. and it makes both guys better. Yeah. But uh, there was no doubt. Talking to Frank Signetti, he was going to go with Joe Daly in this football game, and, and it would take a, 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 a huge act, um, just a disastrous performance to have Camp Sexton in there. We welcome you joining us from the Northern Illinois Ohio game. Gary Thorne along with Andre Ware and Todd Harris. Rutgers the football in the lead. North Carolina needs to get it back. That'll be complete up to about the 35. Brian Leonard out of the backfield hit by Quentin Pearson. And Rutgers now needs to gain a couple of first downs. You know what I like about that call? Right there, you're not trying to sit on the football and run the clock out. You are continuing to play football as if it's 0-0. And I think that's the attitude you got to take. Keep moving the football. Do what you've done at the, to this point. Mix the pass with the run. Keep the defense off balance. But turn the clock is what Rutgers is doing now. Second down and five. Mike Teal, the Rutgers quarterback, has had a fine day. A great day for Ray Rice, the running back. 27, closing in uh, the 200-yard rushing game. That he will carry and uh, will gain a couple. But a big play by the defense in North Carolina. They need the football back here. They've got their timeouts remaining. Each team has three. They've used none of them here in the second half. Edwards in on the hit. You know, you like to say this is the biggest play in a football game. All plays are big in a football game. But this is a huge play in this football game for North Carolina defensively. They've got to stop here. And if they do what it does, it provides them with a lot of time and a couple of timeouts. We know in college football, that's a lot of time. A lot of time. 344, an eternity when you have two timeouts to go along with it. And I take it back. Carolina had used one, so they've got two left. Rutgers has three. And a timeout on the field. That's being used right here. It is 21-16 Rutgers, but not over. Rutgers has the football. The football players of North Carolina revving their fans up during the break. 21-16, Rutgers leading. Third down. Rutgers is 8 for 11 on third downs. This is a third and three. Rutgers has the football. North Carolina with the momentum. Brian Leonard in the backfield. They split two receivers to the right side. Teal will work out of the shotgun and incomplete and it stops the clock and it brings up a punting situation. Very surprised Gary that they don't go to one of the two playmakers and Leonard or Rice in that situation. They try to go outside to the youngster red shirt freshman Dennis Campbell to pick up the first down teal there an incomplete pass and you knew this place was going to erupt if North Carolina held up defensively. All right, it'll be Brandon Tate standing back for Carolina at the 25-yard line. It is the first time today that we have had a three and out by Rutgers. First time. Joe Radigan on to do the putting. Only the third time. Puts the ball with a great big high spiral. Back, it will bounce and goes out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. North Carolina gets a chance on the offense, a chance to win this football game. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Intelligent key to These are Rutgers fans thinking about opening game against Illinois last year. Yeah, and, and you know, here's the storyline of this football game. Right here, Ray Rice. Three touchdown runs there, the first of the three. Here the second, right over that left side of the offensive line, back into the middle of the formation. And right here, the nice little cutback. But then on the North Carolina side of the field, Joe Daly leading his football team. Nice touch over the top to the big-time receiver, Hakeem Nix, who's really stepped up along with Brooks Foster. But right now, riding on the shoulders of that quarterback there, young man Joe Daly. North Carolina's hopes of winning this football game. Chevrolet players of the game, Ray Rice, 197 yards. Joe Daly, 23 out of 32, 219. North Carolina's got the football. Barrington Edwards is in the backfield. Joe Daly at quarterback will try and engineer a drive. Looking downfield for the long bomb. Big rush. He's shown he can run. Still wants to throw it. Can't. Gets to the 30 and gets out of bounds at the 32-yard line. What I like there, you don't take a chance. The game's on the line. Pretty much you may have. This may be your last possession of this football game. Take care of the football. But, Gary, both sides want this situation. 
Rutgers, they want it because last year's come from behind loss when they lost to Illinois. They want to prove that they can get it done. And North Carolina right now want to prove that with Joe Daly, they can play from behind, come back, and win this football game. Boy, just a test of wheels on both sides of the football. Third good scramble for Daly today. 15, 10, and 5 yards. Second down and 5. Daly back looking over the middle. Did he catch? No, incomplete. Almost. Knicks had that for a moment on a one-handed grab. Daly saying that's my fault. You know what? It's not a, not a, it was a well-placed football because it was away from everybody. High, he knows that Hakeem Knicks at 6-1. Great leaping ability and able to go over the top and nice mitts right there. Just got to make a play. We saw Brooks Foster's make a play. Uh, uh, the touchdown pass or reception for Hakeem Knicks in the end zone. This is the time when the playmakers have to step up and make plays. Brooks Foster, his favorite targets back in there, 18 out of 22 this half. It is a third down and five one more time. North Carolina is running out of time here in the fourth. They, Edwards, they give it to him, 35-40, and that'll be enough for the first down. He barrels ahead maybe to the 41-yard line for Barrington Edwards. He has shared time with Ronnie McGill at that tailback position. And a great call by Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator. Everybody's thinking pass. A lot of angles underneath for the draw play. Body on a body. And now it's just Barrington Edwards getting up the field for positive yards. Going to pick up the first. Only needed five. Get it downhill in a hurry. First down and 10. North Carolina down. 21-16. But they have the football. Joe Daly trying to mount the big drive. Goes over the middle. Wide open. And that'll take it into Rutgers territory at the 43 yard line. Knicks again. Freshman 6'1, 210. Boy, as he turned in to an outstanding receiver. Let's check in with John Saunders. John. Gary, just want to show you what happened moments ago. It was Charlie Weiss getting off the bus, leading the Notre Dame Fighting Irish up against Georgia Tech. It's coming up at 8. Back to you. It is a first down and 10. North Carolina moving it. Joe Daly. Daly out of the shotgun has got four receivers. One setback. Long count. And he's going to scramble. Comes to the near side to the 40. 35 and gets out of bounds at the 33-yard line. I don't know if that was a set play or just a scramble. I'll tell you what, a smart football player, and I got a chance to sit down and talk with Joe Daly yesterday, and the first thing you get from him is just his calmness, and he's showing it on the football field right now. Very reserved, very laid back, doesn't get too excited. You need that from the quarterback position because everybody feeds off that position right there, especially at times like this in a football game. What a statement he's making after having to sit for a year after transferring from Nebraska after being their starter in 2003. It is a first down and 10. Daly at his own, Daly at the 40 of Rutgers. Ooh, that's the kind of play that got him in trouble. Yeah, it took at a Nebraska. shot. He took a shot and then he took a shot because he tried to squeeze one in there to Brooks Foster and a bad decision, but then the defensive back steps up and pops him, excuse me, William Beckford, the left end, steps up and pops him as well. So, you know, you, you try to take a chance there. Be careful with the football. This may be the last drive you have if you're North Carolina. He's passed for 270, uh, 272 total yards, running and passing today as Daly has been a scrambler all day. A second down in 10 now, North Carolina and Rutgers territory. Barrington Edwards again called on. Good tackle made at the 28, and a timeout will be immediately called by the Tar Heels. Eric Foster for Rutgers on the hit. One more timeout remaining for North Carolina. This may prove to be the turning point in this game, the touchdown that wasn't. Yeah, the touchdown that wasn't. The officials actually got it right. That's what instant replay for Brenton Edwards here. It does not, he does not cross the goal line. They call this one back, and then the fumble here, there was no whistle. You think that it should have been stopped? Right there, digging it out, William Beckford, and it gave Rutgers excellent field position. Now the play selection becomes vital. You have worked on this in spring ball and in the fall on these situational and calls. You hit the nail on the head. Play selection. That last play, the draw play to uh, Barrington Edwards. Nice call, on my opinion. In my opinion, you got a couple of timeouts. You get 
half of it back just a little bit to get yourself in a third down and manageable situation where you still have the entire playbook in which to go to. Run. You can run the football if you want, you know, and you have another timeout. Or you can throw the football and come back on fourth down as well. So a lot of different options for this North Carolina football team at this stage in the game. Doesn't look too pressurized down there, does it? John Bunning's <laughs> making jokes with his staff over there as he's smiling. And sometimes you just have a feeling as a coach. It's a good feeling. You know what you can do. You know your offense is on the move. You have the momentum on your sideline. Bunning right there, relaxed as a head football coach. I'm not relaxed up here. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. It is a third down and six, eight out of 12 in third down conversions. Wide side to the far side where they've got two receivers. Two to the near side as well. Daly back. Under the rush, throws it to an interception right into the hands of the Rutgers' Manny Collins, who gets his second interception today. I don't know where he wanted that football to go, well, he, but there was nothing near. He wanted it to go to Barrington Edwards, the running back, and try to get him matched up on a linebacker. And Barrington Edwards looked like he just turned, cut his route. Right here, you're going to see him work across the screen, and Joe... Daly right there just stop whenever they stop and his zone coverage you're throwing to where you think your receiver or your running back's going to end up through to a spot and in that spot was Manny Collins. Manny Collins with the interception had never had one in the previous three years. He's got two today and for Daly the interception rises up to bite him again. That's what it did to him in Nebraska. It has done it to him here. And the Rutgers faithful who have hung on are excited again. You know, that's that's what makes offensive football so special. It takes everybody as a unit working together. You see right there, one piece of the unit doesn't work. You get a guy that pulls up on you, all of a sudden, there's the interception. Now all Rutgers has to do is hang on to the football. They would like for Ray Rice to get the 200 yards as a personal matter. He carries right there. He only needs a couple more. Yes, sir, that was a big play. We're, we agree. Yeah, it was. And I'll tell you what, he stepped in for Jason McCourty, who, like Todd mentioned, injured his right ankle. In comes Manny Collins. And boy, he has made a couple of big plays at the end of this football game to help his Rutgers football team. He needs one more yard for his second career 200-yard rushing football game. That high 217 came against Connecticut. Look at that, 6.6 .6 yards a carry. That's getting it done. Outstanding. So Rutgers on the verge of picking up the win against North Carolina. will face Illinois, the team, them, team that beat them in the opener last year. I think there's a little revenge factor going oh, on there. Big time. It yes, ruined indeed. their season. Although, as we said, Rutgers did make it to a bowl for the uh, first time in 27 years. And they're looking to improve on that. I mean, that is not enough. There are high expectations in this Rutgers program. Their athletic director saying, look, we've been working on this for, for eight years. Yeah. So these expectations are perfectly fine. That's what we want. And, you know, talking to Greg Ciano, the head coach, he said he feels that you're headed in the right direction when the players take over the running of the program. And he goes, that's where they are right now. The guys gathering themselves together for summer workouts or being the first on the practice field before the coaches in the, sp in the spring. That's where Rutgers is headed. They wanted to build on momentum from their first bowl game in 27 years. Guess what? They are riding it into 06 right now. There is Teal. They've got their number one quarterback, and it's a matter of making it work. The North Carolina, they ended up missing a bowl game by a loss at the end of the year to Virginia Tech 30 to 3. They ended up 5 and 6, 4 and 4 in the ACC. Both of these teams knew this was one of those games on your schedule, even though it was the first game that you looked at it. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. We're well, gonna have a good year, gotta have it. Because North Carolina. Virginia Tech coming in here. Then they get an off week with Furman. <laughs> they ought to win that one. But then at Clemson, at Miami, South Florida, bowl team last year, and then on the road to Virginia. Brutal schedule for North Carolina. Rutgers with a football. 43 seconds left to go in the football game, and uh, that should be a 200-yarder. Ray Rice on the carry. We'll get at least a yard of it there. North Carolina, you see Quentin Pearson, number three, moving in. He wants to keep everybody away. Don't want any unsportsmanlike calls. Get up off the football. Because this one is just about over. And for Rutgers, they were challenged in this game. Rice has a 200-yard day in the rushing department. 201 officially now. 
Teal a real fine job of mixing up the offense. He put the ball in the air when he needed to, and Rice ran it when he needed well, to. Well, we knew Rutgers had speed, but what surprised me was the fact that they were able to run the football effectively right at a big defensive front of North Carolina, and that's where Ray Rice made his living, right in the middle of the football field between the tackles. You're not talking about a big guy, 5'9", 195 pounds, but boy, was he effective between the tackles this afternoon. Teal ends up, or has, 14 out of 20 for 145 yards in the air, and that is what Rutgers had hoped. They wanted to have a mixed, blended offense here that, so you could keep the defenses on. Called an outstanding game, mixing the run with the pass and Mike Teal in my opinion just managed the football game and it was first first start of the 06 year for him a young quarterback who struggled at times last year for this Rutgers football team just go out and manage it and allow your playmakers the Leonard Rice and uh, Clark Harris to make some plays for you and that's just what he did Sean Tucker you throw his name in there as well a couple of big catches on the afternoon from the outside Rice will have some of the gaudiest numbers of anyone this college football week Weekend. 31 carries, 201 yards, 3 TDs, and 12 first down carries. Rutgers just trying to run it out now. North Carolina's used all of their timeouts. So Rutgers will begin their season with a victory. 21-16 over North Carolina. It did not come easy. And the big play we showed you on the goal line, what looked like a North Carolina touchdown, reversed by the replay that showed it did not cross the line. That's the way it will end. Yeah, and it was just a well-played football game on both sidelines. And I'll tell you, Rutgers just showed some perseverance, building on the momentum that, uh, that we talked about coming in from last year. And North Carolina, boy, they've got a tough, tough road ahead with yes, that schedule. They do. Big star in the field with Todd Harris. Todd? All right, Gary. Well, San Francisco has Rice Aroni, but the biggest dish in New Jersey is Ray Rice. 201 yards today. Not bad for a kid from New Rochelle. Was the plan coming in here to get you the ball more or Brian Leonard? I mean, we just had a steady game plan. It wasn't just to get me a Brian more. I guess we were just going with the flow. But I'm glad I was able to do what I did. Our team really responded to the pressure they brought us. I mean, but they're a great team. You know, I mean, they got a lot to look forward to in the season. But I think we did a great job today. Last year, you guys to go to a bowl game, the Inside.com, you lose to Arizona State. Was that the pinnacle of getting you guys there? Or is this just one more game and a step of where you want to be? This is a step where we want to be. We want to keep going. We want to go to another bowl game this year and win one. Congratulations, Ray. Thanks a lot, man. Gary, 201 yards for the young man from New Rochelle. Boy, what? That's his second 200-plus uh, yard game, and he's a star here. Rutgers wins it. 21-16, that's our final. On behalf of Andre Ware, Todd Harrison, all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us from North Carolina. We bid you adieu.